Mr. Carmona, have you spoken with your attorney? Um, not this morning. Okay, you may want I, to. I spoke with Mr. Schemke uh, oh. a few minutes ago, and he said he was going to be using this, uh, logging into Zoom shortly. Oh, okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Carmona, I want to remind you that you are in court. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you. Is there is there something you're implying aside like what? Well, sir, are you um, eating or vaping or anything right there? I was. I'm done. Sorry. Yes. And I actually am very sorry. I I figured that may have been inappropriate, and I, I do apologize. It very much is. Okay. All right. If you can hold up that audio sign, please, for the individual that does not connect to the audio. Is that, was that intended for me? No, 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 that, no, that's not for you. That's for the individual that's not connected. All right, so we are going on the record in the matter of Anthony Carmona, 231002. <clears throat> Good morning, Your Honor. Mr. Shemke, appearing on behalf of my client. It's time he said it's a matter of being heard via Zoom. Mr. Carmona, can you state your name for the record? Anthony Joseph Carmona. Okay. So, Mr. Carmona is out on bond. The sentencing is scheduled for August 15th. And we had a bond violation hearing June 28th in this, in this case where defendant pleaded guilty. We increased testing and continued the alcohol tether. And then we, at the pre-trial date, <clears throat> there was a plea entered and the court did grant the request from the alcohol tether at that time. Testing was still to continue. Then it alleges that Mr. Carmona failed to appear for testing on July 26th, as well as July 13th. And counsel, what is the intention today? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, I'm sorry. Also, I'm sorry. Also, that he was positive for marijuana on July 18th. Okay. And Your Honor, in this circumstance, uh, my client understands he could have a violation probation hearing. That won't be necessary. All right, Mr. Carmona, please raise your right hand. Let me swear from the testimony about this kind of be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. All right. And you heard the allegations, sir, correct? Yes, ma'am. And as to the allegation that you tested positive for marijuana on July 18th, as well as failed to appear for testing on July 13th and July 26th, in violation of this court's bond conditions, how do you plead? Guilty. As long as Mr. Shemke approves of that. Yes, I do, Mr. Kamala. And sir, you've gone over your rights as it relates to a bond violation hearing, correct? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And you understand by entering into a plea, you'll be waiving some of those rights, specifically your right to a contested hearing. Yes. And you also have gone over the possible penalty as a result of your plea today, correct? Yes. And knowing all that, you still want to continue with your plea? Yes. Has anybody promised you anything, threatened you, or coerced you in any way for you to enter into a plea? No, ma'am. Okay. And counsel, if you could please run to your client. Yes. As a condition of bond, you were to test. Did you fail to appear on July 17th, excuse me, July 13th and July 26th? Yes. And then you will indicate that a test taken on July 18th reflected use of marijuana, correct? Yes. Satisfied, Your Honor. The court is satisfied the plea is knowing voluntary and factually accurate. The court will accept your plea to the bond violations. And counsel, why should I not revoke your client's bond and have them um, remanded to jail until his next court date. 
Your Honor, my client's appeared at any and all future court dates timely. We had uh, given we gave a notification to the court that he wouldn't he would test positive for marijuana. I'd ask that a base level be established. I didn't see any evidence to suggest that it had spiked, but rather that this was from previous notification to the court that he had used marijuana, but is not currently using marijuana. Um, as to the missed court dates, unfortunately, Mr. Carmona did. Uh, suffer an extreme loss. He was seeing someone, um, he was in a romantic relationship and that person um, had an overdose and passed away. Um, it was a challenging period of time. It still is very challenging. I had a very long conversation with my client indicating that although I am sympathetic for his loss, that these uh, orders of the court are just that orders, not guidelines, not suggestions. My client is going to be sentenced uh, relatively shortly. I'd ask that uh, any sort of consideration for admonishment uh, be reflected on the day of sentencing. Uh, he hasn't had any other missteps, Judge. I'd ask for leniency when considering the appropriate action here, especially because we are embarking upon uh, most likely a probationary term that will be implemented relatively shortly. Thank you, Judge. So, Mr. Carmona, yes. if I test you right now, what's in your system? Hopefully. Play a very small trace of marijuana, if not anything, zero or anything other than that. When's the last time you used marijuana, sir? Uh, it's so long to keep track of it. I don't, a long time since the last time, like since my last court date, I have not used, if that suffices as an answer. And yet you were with an individual that overdosed. He, he wasn't with that individual. That person, in my understanding, they overdosed. He was not using any sort of narcotics and that person didn't overdose on marijuana, Judge. Right, it appears though that was cocaine, correct? Correct, which my client is not tested positive for. I, I've always expressed to him that he should uh, avoid toxic uh, friendships or or be around anything like that. But in this circumstance, Judge, my client did not imbibe, he did not use, he did not distribute. And it's a tragic scenario, but my client was not a factor in that scenario. And hey, Mr. Carmona? Yes. You're testifying under oath that you were not present when that overdose occurred? Correct. In fact, she had been doing it because we were fighting. Sorry about that. And, and I was actually absent. She was calling my phone. And I had text messages to say, come home, come home, come home. And I just wouldn't. And I wish I did. She's actually my best friend's little sister. And sir, why didn't you appear for the testing? I was actually trying to go to the hospital the next day. My main focus was seeing her. Um, honestly, I don't know. I, I, that, must, that, that day, I can say, um, outside circumstances took precedence, probably unrightfully so, took precedence over uh, my own drug testing. I wasn't thinking clearly. And I apologize for being emotional. I, the way Mr. Shemke put it is just a different perspective in the way I thought of her death. And Sir, when did that, um, when did that overdose occur? So she passed away on the 22nd. It was three days prior to that in the morning. So it must have been July 18th to 19th going into the morning. Okay, so that doesn't explain anything about the, the missed test on July 13th, sir. It doesn't. And honestly, that's just like uh, the June 6th one where I literally have, like I called this morning, I call every morning. I don't know how, once in a while, I must just miss it. Like I just, I don't get it. I, I, I run a business, so I handle a lot of phone calls. 
I, I don't have an excuse. I, I don't have an excuse. I'm sorry. I have no excuse. None. Other than I'm just might not be fit for society or um, doing like I just I have a therapist appointment tomorrow that they were finally able to get me in. I know I'm going crazy. Well, sir, here's the, here's the thing, right? Um, this isn't your first violation of bond. No. You previously violated bond by not testing June 7th. I thought it was the sixth, but that's okay. What did I just say, June what? I thought it was June 6th, but I thought, I guess I was wrong. Okay, oh, uh, this shows June 7th, but either way, you failed to test that. And now you failed to test twice again. And where is it that your um, therapist appointment is at, sir? Um, it's at, I believe, one o'clock. They told me I can only have one hour, not two. I tried to get that's, that's your that's your first appointment. Yeah, that's the first time anyone could get me in. I called everywhere, everywhere. Well, you had an appointment, sir. You had an appointment June second, based upon your email. What happened to that one? Um, I, a friend of mine was going to try to get me into a therapist of his, and it didn't work out. It was it, it. It would be a boring story for me to tell you. It just didn't work the way that it should have. Not boring, underwhelming, sorry. Here's what the court's going to do. The court's going to indicate 10 days jail for your bond violation. In Wayne County? Yes, sir. Ma'am, please no, please. I can't, I literally, please no, please. I will do yes. anything, anything, no. No. What you're going to do is you're going to be reporting to Wayne County Jail tonight at six o'clock. Your Honor, would it be possible to get a later uh, report date? Judge, he does uh, own a, a business and I know that he has appointments. He, I'd ask for just a later report date so we can make the necessary arrangements. Oh my God. No, please. Justice Santos, please. I'll do anything. Uh, do not go to counsel, jail, please. Counsel, you're playing this now a second bond violation. No. In oh my God. Less than two months. So the court's no. going to indicate that he is to report today. Yeah, and um, I know that we have sentencing uh, in one week. Would it be possible just for the uh, sake of convenience to have him uh, seven days in custody so that when he's sentenced on the uh, 14th, he'll be in a position to be released from Wayne County and start his probationary terms immediately? Oh my God, they're going to kill me in there. They're going to kill me. Well, so, counsel, the court indicated 10 days jail, and um, we will address his sentencing on the sub on the 14th. And if he's still in custody, then they can zoom him in for his sentencing. So, sir, you'll have to email into probation so they can tell you how to go about reporting. You need to email in by 10 o'clock. Well, do you think if I serve those seven days that, those, that you're going to just not give me probation? I'll get time served for my public disorderly. Sir, the seven, the ten days I just indicated is for your bond violation. Honestly, this, I, I, this gives. If I'm being honest with you, it gives me suicidal thoughts. If I'm being one hundred percent honest with you, I can't do this. I'm being so Sir? serious. Mm -hmm. okay. I can't do this. Well then. Mm -hmm. So are you They're a gonna kill me in there. I don't want someone to rape or kill me in there. The last time I stayed in there, it was Sir? not good. Sir? I have a I have a therapy appointment tomorrow. Okay, sir, are you currently at your home? I don't have a home. I'm kicked out of it. My first wife is divorcing me. That's why I was with Lauren in the first place. My first wife is pregnant okay. with my first child, where, and she I, kicked I me out. That, sir. Where Where are you at right now? If I indicate that to you, then now I'm incriminating myself and and all of that. I can't do that either. How are you incriminating yourself if you tell me where you Not are? Not incriminating myself. You guys, you guys are going to send someone here to come get me, and it's going to be a whole crap show. I can't do it. I can't do this anymore. I, I can't. I can't go to jail. I thought I was doing everything the right way. Sir? Where are you currently at? Can I just 
go to a mental institution. I will go to a mental institution rather than jail. I will go straight to a mental institution and tell them everything, all of my intentions and just get locked up there, please. Sir, are you at your, are you at your parents' home? No, I'm not anywhere to be found and I'm at a hotel under someone else's name because I lost my ID. <laughs> I really did not think that you were going to lock me up. I, I've been praying on this, praying on this, that this won't happen. I literally, no, I cannot go to jail. I can't. I can't. Sir, let me just tell you this right now. I cannot go to jail. And sir, you cannot violate this court's orders. And yet you still did. Again. So... I'm ordering you to tell me where you are. Well, Mr. Carmona. Ma'am, I'm a mentally ill loner dealing with a society that doesn't care about him and treats him like trash. I can't do this justice, Anto. I can't, I, I can't, I can't. Sir, we cannot help you if you're not telling us where you are. You're not helping me. You're not helping me at all. You're not hearing me and you have no empathy towards people. Okay. The love of my life oh, died. Right. The love of my life died. I don't think you understand. Do you understand what you have when you have everything, but you have no one? It's like multiplying by zero. You have nothing. And here I am trying to do my very best to oblige to what you have to say. The last time I was in jail, there were people unlocking their own doors. They were coming up to my thing. They said, I hate white people. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to bite you. They had AIDS. They were in there for murder. They're going to hurt me. I cannot go there. I can't. I refuse and I will do anything not to go. Sir. My wife has a half a million dollar life insurance policy. She can't afford the house without me anyway. I don't know if suicide counts and constitutes as she'll still get the half a million, but she's better off without me anyway. I can't do this, Judge. I cannot go to jail again. If it was Dickerson, I could do it. If it was Dickerson, I'd be just fine. I'd be like, lock me up, throw away the key uh, until uh, it's time to get off. I cannot go to Wayne County. I just can't sir just so you're aware dickerson is wayne county jail yeah but dickerson you only had misdemeanor people going in there i went in there when i was 17 years old it was totally fine you walked around like it was nothing wayne county you are in there everyone has red wristbands on except me and they're all like oh uh they're not going to catch me for this murder over here because i was in this spot of the parking lot oh they're not going to catch me for this i got away with murder like 75 times it's insane I cannot go. The last time I was there, I was in a fetal position, laying under two guys, so hoping that other guys wouldn't get to me, crying my eyes out, not able to sleep next to cockroaches crawling in front of my face. This is the truth. I don't care how humiliating it sounds. It's the worst place in the stinking world. I cannot do it. I can't. Okay. So, sir, where? I'm not going to tell you where I am. Why not? Because you guys are going to come get me and throw me in jail. I just told you I can't go. Sir, you're indicating that you need some mental health treatment. So where is it that you're at? I'm at a hotel. Yes. You've established that. Where? Well, I believe that you have a hidden agenda behind your questioning. I don't have anything hidden, sir. Okay, so are you asking me where I'm at so that we can get, send someone here to come lock me up? Sir, I'm making sure that you are safe and that you're not harming yourself. Jail so, is not safe for anybody. Sir. So you're gaslighting sir, me. I am not doing that. That is for sure. You've indicated that you are threatening harm to yourself. So, oh, because I'm very serious. I'm not joking at all. I am aware of that, sir. 
So where are you? I've already me? attempted oh, suicide no. once in my life. I drank antifreeze when my first wife, my first girlfriend, sorry, tried to uh, go get an abortion on me. I drank two cups of antifreeze, ended up in the hospital, and they had to do dialysis on me for five hours straight. And they said if I wouldn't have done that within the amount of time that I did, that I would have needed dialysis done on me for the rest of my life. Uh, once a week and i had fortunately made it in the right amount of time i'm not afraid of death ma'am i cannot go to jail sir sir when did that happen that was um uh, my kid would be 11 years old today i'm sorry your kid would be 11 years old today yes so i was about 21 years old when i attempted to commit suicide 20 to 21 years old when i attempted to commit suicide the first time my dad would attest to that two cups red solo cups of car coolant antifreeze that's the reason my twitter name is Okay. I read that it was the most painless way for you to die. It shuts down one organ at a time. Mm -hmm. Sorry if I just fed someone else some information. Mm -hmm. So, sir, what can... Um... Ma'am, I got drunk at a bar one night. This is all over me getting drunk at a bar one night. I didn't fight anybody. I didn't steal anything. I didn't drive a car. I did nothing. In fact, I called the police on myself to try to get my keys back from the bar. And in a failed attempt, they came back. They came, they put the cuffs on me and said I'd be released on my own recognizance the next morning that I was going to sleep off my drunkenness. I paid your lawyer $2,500. I'm willing to pay any other fines to get off of this. I have a lot of other things that I have going on in my life. I run a half a million dollar business single-handedly. I take care of everyone around me. I give to the poor. I give to anyone that's around me. I have no money because I give to everyone around me, but I'm going to go make, well, I can't make any money now. I just sold a rooftop and then I'm going to let a lot of people down on. Yep, man, I make so much money. It's not even funny. And I give it to everyone else around me all the time, all the time. I used to be a youth theater at the church for five years. The only reason why I'm going through a divorce is because of a faith change in the first place. And then when my wife left me, just like our last girl who was uh, in, in court, um, the only reason I drank that night was because of the divorce I'm going through. That's it. That's the only reason I drank is because I was depressed about my wife leaving me, lying about the vows that she gave me. Because when she said in sickness and health, she didn't mean it. I wish she would have been under oath. Not that it probably would have mattered. You wish that who would have been under oath? My wife, when she married me and said she wouldn't leave me. She left me for two months, served me divorce papers. If you knew my real story, if you knew what was really going on with me, Judge DeSanto, respectfully, I really believe you'd have a different perspective on people. Sir, I'm trying to help you. No, you're not. You're trying to send me to jail for 10 days, and Chris is trying to get three days off of it. So that was, and then you're going to sentence me again when once probation hits. I even got a medical marijuana card like you asked me to. And you said that's not good enough, even with a letter of recommendation, because there's other stipulations on it. It's a whole big old game. It's unfair. It's not fit for the, the person in society, no matter how hard we try, no matter what we do. I remember last court date, there was the girl's birthday and you wouldn't even give her a decent bond. You know, she doesn't have money and she was a mother. I get it. We owe a debt to society. But how are we supposed to, how am I supposed to give you guys anything if I'm in jail? Sir, at this point, I'm not very concerned with how you're going to be paying fines and costs or whether those are even going to be paid at all. That isn't, that isn't the point of this, sir. The point is that when there's behavior, certain behavior, that is how, that there's accountability for that. So, you, But you think uh, it's okay to just send someone to jail? That makes someone more depressed. You act like I'm some crazy criminal. I got drunk one night. Have you never gotten drunk? That's all I did. I got drunk. I got drunk. This is all over me getting drunk one time over a divorce. And you just heard that the second, the, the girl I should have been with just died. And you want to send me to jail. Are you kidding me? That's crazy. And you guys call me crazy. Y'all call me crazy. Wow. Sir, nobody's, nobody's calling you crazy. Well, everyone else does. Maybe you haven't on record, but and maybe behind closed doors, I doubt that. What do you mean behind closed doors? Well, I'm talking about the door behind you when you close it and then what you say about the case is behind the doors. I'm just making an assumption and I could be wrong and I apologize if I am. Okay. <clears throat> So, sir, if this court were to amend its sentence, <clears throat> what would you, where would you go? What would you be doing? I would move to Missouri. I'd get out of 
here. I would never come back to Michigan unless it's to see my kid. I would get out of here. I would be gone. I go, I have a whole plan of what I was going to do, but this is changing the course of, I cannot go to jail anymore. I can't do it. The last time I got a, 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 a marijuana charge in Texas, uh, when I was 19 years old, they said, we'll put you in jail for two weeks and then you'll be off if you go back to Michigan. I said, heck yeah, throw me in jail for two weeks. I'll go back to Michigan. You put me in jail for four days to wait for an alcohol tether. When I got out of that, I had to sit there on an alcohol tether for seven weeks. And alcohol was the issue. The only thing I've ever failed for was marijuana and that's legal and I have my card. As well as the letter of recommendation because I do heating and cooling and my back hurts all the time. That's why I go to the chiropractor every other week. You there will be a suicide on your hands if you cannot help me here. Sir, I'm trying to help you and you're not letting me know. All you got to say is so you're not going to jail. You. All you got to say is you're not going to jail and I promise I will be on the straight and narrow. Sir? That's it. That's all you got to say. You if not, you would be on the you would be you indicated you would be on the straight and narrow when you were last out on bond. And then my and wife died. Then you. my wife died. That was not your wife, sir. Well, that's not by the government standards. However, I go by the Bible. You asked me last time also uh, as a state moment when was fourth of july that should be you should know where you were i don't celebrate fourth of july because i don't partake in traditions of men sir if you were to walk into a hospital right now for mental health treatment is that i mean is that your plan well it depends if it keeps me out of jail yeah unless the police are going to show up to that mental institution and come lock me up sir if you're in the hospital, I can't imagine the police are going to be going there to then take you to jail because you're under medical treatment. Well, if I have hospital. a warrant for my arrest, which I guarantee is going to happen immediately after this. You're going to put a warrant out for my arrest? I didn't say anything about issuing a warrant for your arrest right now, sir. Not at all. Are we not on a track of conversation that's, take, that's, that's considering not putting me in jail? I'm sorry, you're breaking up. What was that? Great. Now you're breaking up. That kind of sucks. Nope. No, nope, sorry. I know. We, we're we both breaking up. That kind so. of sucks. Okay. Your connection was not stable. So can you tell me what it is you just said, please? I said, are we on a track of conversation that's going to lead to me not going to jail? Otherwise, we're kind of just spinning our tires here. And I hate to waste time because it's your most valuable resource. I found that out through Lauren. You found that out where? When my wife, my fiance, whatever you'd like to call her, when she died, I recognized how limited time is. Okay. Well, sir, I'm on the track right now of trying to um, help you get the help mental treatment. Me. Yes, here we go. Help me. Excuse me, let me finish, please. Trying to get you some mental health treatment, sir. That's what I'm on the track of right now. Okay, but that does not include jail time, right? I will, I will get in my vehicle, dispatch out all of my stuff, subcontract it all out, give my work home to somebody else and go institutionalize myself anywhere as long as it's not jail. As long as I don't go to Wayne County, I'm good. I promise that. I have insurance. I can put myself in anywhere. And so Just not be, jail. Sir? Just not jail. Sir, where would that be? I, I, I don't care. You tell me. I don't care. No, I I'll you, go anywhere. I, I need you to tell me. Uh, well, it won't be in the county that I'm currently in now. Um, so, uh, I would go to Wayne County, anywhere in Wayne County. I would just Google the first place that'll lock me up into a mental institution and give me three meals a day and a spot to sleep and a book to read. And sir, how do I know that that's where you're going to go? Well, and at this point, you. it doesn't really you, matter whether sir? you know or not, because uh, you really, I mean, sir? you don't know where I'm going to go or what I'm going to do. I could leave the state right now and go jump off a cliff in, oh, in, in Arizona. Not, well, so, sir. Well, I can't really talk you to you the way that I am right now either, but I clearly am. So, obviously. You cannot, you cannot leave the state without permission from the court. So... How am I supposed to, you want me to trust you that you're going to do as you're saying? 
it doesn't matter, so really matter whether you trust me or not. I honestly, how do you want point, to... moving forward, I honestly, uh, if I'm being honest with you, I don't know what my, my, my future actions are. No clue. None. My intentions are to go to a hospital. And sir, so that is what I'd like to know, because if you're going to go to a hospital, then I can have you tethered to the hospital for treatment. So then we can make sure that you're getting that treatment that you need. So that is the information that I need right now, sir. I can't believe you want to put me in jail. I literally can't believe that. Do you have kids? Sir? Yeah, you're not going to answer that question. I get it. You. If your kid got drunk, would you send them to jail? You wouldn't. Sir? You wouldn't. I... I just said I'm How trying you to help you. Husband passed away. Sir, I just said I'm trying to help you. And I'm trying to figure out where you can go. And that I can make sure that you're getting the treatment that you need. So Here's the thing. I can't do that. It doesn't really matter you if you at. make sure of anything, Ms. DeSanto, <laughs> respectfully, because honestly, you really don't give, you really don't care. So I care about myself. I'll take care of myself. Like I said, I was going to go to a therapy appointment tomorrow. I I was, and I've been staying sober. My dad's been sober for 22 years. He's like fifth generation down from Bill W. He knows how to do the steps the correct way. I've been through it. I missed a drug test because my girl died. And I've been receiving death threats day in and day out ever since. All I literally got to do is show up to their house and they'll shoot me. If I go knock at her parents' door, they will shoot me. Why is that? Or why do you Because they that? believe I played a role because all the money that was in her bank account came from me. I put about 10 grand a week in her bank account. Because that's what I do. My business is a money-making machine. And when you lock me up, that stops. Like I said, I do about a half a million a year single-handedly. I've been doing life right for a really long time. A really long time. You know, the smartest people tend to be the most insane. I'm left-handed, too. And I know sir, Chris is probably going to drop me after this one. Either that or he's going to be excited for how much I'm going to be able to pay him for how much I would need him after this. Dude, if I go to jail, how am I going to jail? How, so how I'm trying to suggest you. that? Like, that doesn't even make sense to me at all. I've already done four days in Wayne County, plus the one that I stayed in, in, in Wyandotte. Five days in jail already for oh, getting drunk one time. I should have been let go immediately. i will give you guys 20 grand, but it's not about money. I get it. This has been good training wheels for me up until this point. But this, when he started talking about her dying, I was already depressed. Then you compounded it. It was like times five as soon as you said, go to jail. Are you kidding me? You got to be joking. You like, like, there's no way. There's no way. And the truth will set you free. So that's the only reason why I'm telling you all my intentions. I'm supposed to be, I'm under oath right now. I'll tell you all the truth. Okay. And what is that? I already told you I'm suicidal. And so I'm trying to help you, sir. So I got a 20 I'm gauge shotgun in here right now. Yeah. It was for self-defense. I thought, I'll, I'll, man, I'll Kurt Cobain myself in here with no Courtney Love. And that's not a joke. Sir, I'm trying to help you. So I'm trying to figure out where is it that you then would go. And I need go. you to tell me there's no way I'm going to jail again. I need to hear it. Sir, what I'm trying to indicate and what I've been stating is that if you have a hospital that you are intending to go to for treatment, then you can be tethered to that treatment facility or that hospital. No, they all laughed at so me after need... my first court date, right? Everyone laughed at so... me after my first court date. There was a whole subtitle above it. Sir, they I need to know where you're at so that though. I can have you tethered there so I can make sure that you're getting to your, um, that you're getting your treatment. What's it matter to you if I get my treatment, Judge DeSanto? Because, sir, you need assistance in... Mental health? in your treatment mental health yes you know i was diagnosed bipolar manic depressive ocd all this bull crap that i don't even believe in 
What does that mean that you don't believe in? Well, as soon as you tell someone they're bipolar, it puts them into a box, kind of like when you say, hey, black people this, or Asian people that, or men this, or woman that, or as soon as you say something about somebody, it automatically triggers in your brain what's wrong with them. And it already gives you an automatic, because we base everything in front of us off of past experience. So what might mean something to someone means something to someone else. It's all based on perception. As soon as someone calls me bipolar, that could be a triggering word to somebody else. So that means something that's not even completely true. I'm Anthony. And right now I hate my life and I don't see it getting any better despite how hard I try. Anthony, I can understand that. And I can <clears throat> indicate that while you were on the tether, you didn't have any violations. So that's good. I enjoyed the training wheels. In fact, the first day at jail was good for me. However, I cannot go back. Okay. So if I have some assurance- And I will do there... anything not to go back to jail. I understand what you're saying. So if I have some assurances, sir, as to where you're going to be receiving your treatment, and please, and then we can have you tethered there. Then I'm not wearing a tether. I'm not, I'm not, no, no, no. I'm not putting another tether on my ankle. You would I refuse. Be going, I refuse. <clears throat> Anthony, somebody would be coming to where you're located for the tether, you wouldn't have to even step foot in the jail. That's what I'm trying to tell you. What I'm telling you is, is when someone puts a GPS tether on me and I need to go on this spiritual trip that's happening in the middle of September, I am going to where I need to go. And I'll face the consequences when I come back. It's called the Feast what of Tabernacles. It's the seventh holy day. The seventh holy day feast in scripture it has nothing to do with Easter or Christmas. We're talking Passover, Feast of Weeks, Pentecost, the proper holy days that we should be celebrating. The reason I don't celebrate 4th of July, all of this is just an inhibitance from Satan playing out through the flesh. All of it. And yes, it was partially my fault why this all came about, but I have somewhere I need to be in the middle of September. I need to be. And I'll be a, I'll be a caveman in the woods for the rest of my life if that's what it takes. Sir, where is that where is that trip that you'd like to take? I'll, I'll be honest, it's in Missouri. Okay. And what are the dates that you're intending to go? Um, well, it was the middle. It, I believe it's uh, September, September um, like 15th uh, for 10 days. It's a 10 day uh, camping trip. And if I'm being honest, I'm not exactly sure where it is in Missouri. I decided to do that research. I bought five tickets. Lauren was supposed to be on one of them. My dad and my little brother and sister were also going to be on the other ones. Um, but they have also, um, he's also been rejecting me ever since Lauren's passing. I'm sorry, who was that? My father. Your friend. Your father. And why, and why is that? Because he's an irrational individual just like you. Okay, sir, so if um, you were in the position of having to tell somebody uh, when they violated your order a number of times, <clears throat> um, what would you suggest? Mm, I would weigh that, out, <laughs> um, what did this person do? How much time do they spend in jail? How sorry do they feel? And is, is jail time really what, uh, nah, I would look at it and say, mm, you know what? Time served, you're good to go. You've been good to go for quite some time now, but we just keep yanking your chain because we're Wyandotte. You know what's really funny is that Wyandotte held the Guinness Book of World Records for a while for the most bars and churches per capita. You guys got the most bars in the area, yet when someone drinks a little too much at one of them, stimulating the economy, they get locked up and charged more money and get told that they were wrong. How much sense does that make? None. It makes dollars. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I don't think that we hold that record anymore, do we? Not anymore. But you did it one time in my lifetime. When I used to go to school and wind up. 
And where'd you go to school? Well, I went to five different high schools. Which ones? Melvindale, Lincoln Park, Roosevelt, Redford Union, RU High, which I usually was. And I also went to Vassar um, uh, in, up north of Saginaw when I was in juvenile treatment, where I received only 4.75 credits for about seven months of lockout, which was kind of funny to me, but all we did was crosswords anyway. All I did was crosswords? Well, you know, yeah. I mean, that's the same thing you did in um, Wayne County Juvenile Detention Facility as well. I mean, it was crosswords and word searches and you still got some type of credit for it. Are you any good at those? Um, is an elephant big? Is the Pope Catholic? I mean, that's, that's, that's brain, brain mushing, time wasting. Yeah, come on. Yeah, I'm really good at them. Okay. So do you prefer crosswords or word searches? You guys sending someone to my location right now? Is that why you're trying to keep me on for so long? Sir, you haven't told me your location, so I don't know how I'm supposed to be doing that. Well, you know, I prefer word searches. So do I, I'm not great at crosswords. <clears throat> Probably don't do Sudoku either, not me either, but. I do not. Why did you become a judge? Why did I become a judge? To make a lot of money, to be well-respected as a woman. What is it? No, no, because I thought I could make a difference in the community that I live in. Well, you've definitely made a difference in my life. I'll tell you that much. In, in what way is that, sir? Well, suicidal thoughts based on uh, your cold-hearted, uh, uh, whatever, sentencing. Which is pre sentence I haven't even been sentenced yet. I haven't even been sentenced on this crime yet. By the way, if you read the report, I called the cops on myself. For help. For help. You know, I quit eating pig based on my new religion. No, it's not religion, but way of life. Perfect and undefiled religion is to visit orphans and widows in their affliction, which I would never be able to do based on what you're trying to give me. You indicated, I recall <clears throat> at your arraignment, that you had some issues that you were working on that um, seemed to be some mental health issues that you needed assistance with, which is why one of the conditions was when you were released that you were to <clears throat> um, get in contact with your treatment provider and begin they were 90 treatment. days out they were 90 days out okay before they could but see me. I, I ended up going to team wellness and they said they're going to get me in tomorrow and now i gotta let them down i was really looking forward to that actually okay i'm trying to figure out a way so that you can still make that appointment so just tell me that i'm good until the 15th and then i'll see you on the 15th and no harm done we can just forget this whole thing you also said you had an appointment on June 2nd. I have the appointment for tomorrow at 10 o'clock. I literally, it's I'm going, I scheduled all my work calls around it. I have a rooftop unit I just sold for 11 grand. And I, and I pushed that aside so I could make my, my therapist appointment. Okay, so what happened with the June 2nd? I don't know. I don't remember. All the days are just mush now as a result of her passing. Like she literally, I will never find another girl like her. She was the best. She was, oh my God. Like the fact that this is just terrible. This whole thing is just terrible. Just terrible. Nobody cares about anybody. You guys say that you do, but not truly. The actions speak much louder than words. And I used to tell her that all the time. <laughs> And what actions are what actions are those, sir? You're trying to lock me up when I'm telling you I need help. Sir, right now I'm trying to help you instead of lock you up. So you're not going to lock not me telling, up. But you're not telling me where you are so that we can help you. I'm, that's there, no, it, no way, shape, or form am I telling you where I am. So if, if that's on your agenda and that's your line of questioning and your prerogative behind it, you might as well come up with a new um, goal because I will not tell you where I am. 
So you want treatment. I don't want treatment. I want to be left alone. Okay. But I'm offering you, you a substitute you... so that way I get left alone at least for seven days. But you also told me that you wanted to go into treatment. I also told you I wanted to kill myself. Which one do you think I'm going to do? Well, I can tell you which one I hope that you're going to do in lieu of the other one. And that would be treatment. I just want you guys to leave me alone. Everything was just fine until you guys locked me up. Mm -hmm. Everything was just fine. This has added so much catastrophic mess to my brain. And I already have a divorce case I'm going through. I owe someone money that I got a civil case that they sent to me, which I can take care of, but my wife emptied my bank account. I have, a, I have like, this is like my four, four out of four cases I got going on right now. They were investigating me over her death. I was, might've been facing 12 to 15. I was going to change, uh, uh, pay a uh, Rubenstein 45 grand on retainer by putting up my house. I'm dealing with so much other stuff that you guys are just playing with my life over. I got drunk one night, just like the last day, got drunk one night over a nasty divorce. Are you kidding me? This is crazy. It's actually crazy. It's actually crazy and completely unprecedented, completely. And why do you think it's crazy, sir? Because I got drunk one night. A lot of people get drunk. I called the police for help. They did not help. And you have not helped once since either. I mean, now you're listening to me, which is nice. I apologize for the first court date when I, all the things that I said, I called you pretty and stuff like that. You know, it was terrible of me. My dad said it was terrible of me despite everyone thought it was funny and blah, blah, blah. And I started dancing in the courtroom, but you could clearly tell at that court date, there was something wrong with me mentally. I understand that, sir. You even, you acknowledged that yourself that day. I don't recall that. I've rewatched that video two or three times. By the way, that was also the reason why Lauren got a hold of me in the first place was because she saw that court date. What does that, what do, what do you mean by that? Well, she invited me over and said exactly how sexually frustrated are you and greeted me with a threesome. Now that helped. This is not helping. And now Lauren's gone and all I got is you trying to lock me up with a bunch of dudes. It's big old sausage fest. I'm good on that. I'm good. Well, sir, the alternative would be treatment as you indicated. Okay. So you're telling me right now, if I go to treatment, I can avoid jail. If you're tethered to treatment. <clears throat> I don't want to tether. They hurt my ankle. Sir. Okay. Well, we can make sure it's not that tight that it would affect that it would hurt your ankle. I doubt that because as soon as it's on there and I complain about it, it's already done deal, signed, still delivered. I'm not an idiot. I've been through the system so many times. I know that my criminal record only indicates one on your end. That's amazing because I have like nine charges that have been all on me. I, out of Lincoln Park, I got like three out of, man, are you kidding me? I, I've, I've been charged with so many things, but they've all been misdemeanors, no felonies on my record. In my juvenile case, my first place I ever got locked up was by Officer Hunter. He may not even be an officer for you guys anymore. In Wyandotte, um, when I used to run away from home and skip school, I got charged with incorrigibility. <clears throat> and that dragged out for two years of my life. And I was incarcerated for 10 and a half months at 16 years old. Is that when you were in Vassar? Well, uh, it was three different stays based on probation violations. Um, but yeah, seven months was one of the times. Yeah, up in um, Pioneer Working Learning. Okay. And that was a good program. So you, you, you like that program? 
I did, but it's for juveniles. I learned a lot about therapy there and drug uh, abuse. I learned that we can dial down our emotions to mad, sad, glad, hurt, afraid, or ashamed. And uh, mad is just a cover-up emotion for one of the other four outside of glad. And right now, I'm ashamed. I'm hurt. I'm sad. And I'm afraid. I feel all of them at the same time. I can understand that. I'm hurt that I've been rejected by everyone in society. I don't hear you if you're talking. What was that, Mr. Carmona? Something happened with my audio. I didn't hear you if you were speaking. 27th District Court has left the conversation, so you're the only audio at your desk. Is that anything anyone's going to hear? Recording in progress. I've been wearing her hat. I didn't want to wear it in court. Her favorite color was pink. All I can do is think about her anywhere I go, everything I do. I just notice things about her, things that remind me of her. Chris Chemke's tie is pink right now. I figured that was a sign as well. Thought it was going to be a good day. I thought it was going to be a good day. And just like you don't mm -hmm. trust me, I don't trust you guys. I feel like if I tell you where I'm at, I'm going to go get locked up. What, what do you mean by that? I mean, if I go to a place, you say they're coming with a the tether, they're going to come put cuffs on me and take me to county and not really give a rat's butt about me. Because, you know, I have a membership at TPC, or I have a membership at TPC Michigan on one Nicholas Drive. You understand the parallel there is between that golf course and um, jail? At jail, you ask them what time it is, they walk past you and don't even notice you. They don't give a crap. When I walk into TPC, they say, hello, Mr. Carmona, would you like a margarita with your salt that you have behind the counter? Are you shooting around at golf? That's a nice shirt. Things of that nature. And so you golf a lot? Um, yes. Do you have a handicap when you golf? Uh, it's about a 22. And I do roll my ball and hit shots again and this, that, the other. It's just my way of walking and talking alone with God. And getting alone. Well, I try to golf. I don't. Um, I don't do very well. I don't even know what a handicap is. I just know that that's a thing. What What is that? Can you explain that? It's what to you me? shoot over par. It's what you shoot over par on a regular basis. What does that mean? Would you shoot over par? So if so, if I shoot, so like so let's par say you're on a par four, and right, if you shoot a par, if you're on a par four, you're trying to get a four. And then that would mean that you have a zero handicap if you got, that would average you to a zero handicap if you got, but um, now let's just say I would usually shoot a bogey to double bogey on every single hole as average, but obviously you can sprinkle in a birdie or two per round, a couple pars. So how does, what, how does one determine the handicap number? It's an average based on your last three rounds or seven out of your last 10. Let's say par for a course is 72 and you shoot a 94. You just shot 22 over. If you do that and you shoot 97 and then you shoot a 90, and then you have an average of 94, then you have a, a 22 handicap. I was golfing with Lions players the other day, Graham Griska and Baitai. I got their autograph on my scorecard. And what positions did they play? Oh, Graham Glasgow. Isn't he on the offensive line? You know why? That's happening in my life. What's that? Correct. Yeah, I was golfing with them alongside them. They were great guys. You know what they said to me when, they, when I told them what was going on in my life? Not, we're locking you up. Do you like watching football? Good guys. Pai Tai has actually a Super Bowl ring. I believe it's number 19. Hmm? 79, I believe, actually. 72. He's number 72. What was that name? Pai Tai, the, uh, the second, his last name. Pai Tai? Vai Tai starts with a V, like Victor. Oh. 
Is that one that they just acquired in the off season? Because I don't recognize that name. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, and he got a Super Bowl ring from the. Um, you know, I really don't pay attention to football that much, but it was just really cool. Oh, did Luke he say Holmes we're, was there the other day? Luke Combs. Yeah, he was there the other day. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> where was the um the Viatai guy? Where did he end up? Uh, where did he get a Super Bowl ring from? From the Rams, I believe, actually. That's a good question. Oh, was that after Matthew Stafford was traded out there? Yeah, that's a sad thing, too. You know, that's, uh, I don't know. You know, honestly, I don't know. But what I'm saying is, is this whole thing that I'm dealing with and why not is crap. This is crap. This is dumb. There's people out here committing real crimes. I got drunk one night. I don't even drink anymore. I will never touch a drug in my entire life. Not even marijuana. I'm done smoking marijuana. It drove me crazy. I believe that's why my mental state is the way that it is, because how strong the weed is that they sell from the dispensaries. I will never touch weed again. I'll not touch weed again. I may in the future have a little red wine during spiritual holy days, but I'm going to remain completely sober from this day forward, whether you like it or not. Whether I'm in jail, in prison, no matter where I go, I'm going to remain sober. This helped. Everything up until this point helped. So you said you were locking me up. Well, you said the alternative is that you. And like now I don't feel like I can trust that? anything. Now I don't feel like I can trust anything. I can't trust anyone. I can't trust my ex-wife. Can't trust society. I can understand that. Can't even trust myself. Do you trust yourself that you're not going to continue using marijuana? Guaranteed. I would never touch it again. It drove me insane. And I tried to um, conform it into my own narrative to say that it helps, it helps, it helps. But I just, you, I texted Chris that said, I'm no longer going to fight the system anymore. But when you pour salt on a snail, what's it do? It cripples it. That's me to jail. As soon as you threaten me with jail, I will do anything not to go to jail. And I'm not trying to, well, I say that, you know, when you put that tether on me, it's basically jail. Why is that? Because I'm, okay, Lauren and I got tattoos before um, she passed, and she called me aunt, just like my mom did, and her favorite color was pink, just like my mom's, so we went and got tattoos of an aunt, and there's a specific Bible verse passage that talks about the aunt, and it says, go to the aunt, you lazy one, which having no overseer, commander, or ruler, provides her supplies in the harvest for the winter. Ants represent diligence, endurance, strength, provision. I'm an ant. And you're trying to smush me. I'm not trying to do that, Anthony. Well, I have a lot that I can offer to society if you just let me leave me alone. A lot. And what's that? Look at my business. Else, Look at my business. Well, every single household I enter, I'm the owner of the company. I give poor people free service calls. I sometimes hand out money. I offer prayer. The reason why I own my own business is to have that intimacy between me and the person in front of me in their own home. And I don't weigh them all out the same and say, well, your furnace is broke like theirs, so therefore you have to pay the same price. Every case is different. And you look at bond violations as jail time, period. Bond violation, jail time. No matter the circumstance. Um, Despite the fact that I paid a bunch of money to your lawyer that has a, a, an office upstairs that's supposed to be on my behalf, but you don't even listen to him. So what was the point of that? Your attorney has an office upstairs where? Chris. Chris has the office right upstairs. You walk right up the stairs. I sat right outside of it waiting for him one day. 
Mr. Carmona, that's not my office. That's an office that can be used by many of the attorneys who go to the court. I, it's not my office. I don't have rent there. Or space. All right. Well, Chris, thank you for that correction. Thank you for that correction. But do you have any other input in this scenario? What would you do if you were me? If you were me, Chris, what would you do right Mr. now? Mr. Carmona, I made my allocution on your behalf and I wait the judge to make a decision. So he's got no answer. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Passive, not taking responsibility for his client. Got it. Well, Anthony, what, what kind of responsibility do you want your attorney to take for you? I'm trying to- I want him to go back to me and say, hey, this is wrong. This is wrong. He's already served his debt to society by going to jail and paying money. Let him go. He's got stuff a lot more going on than this. Well, you're, you did request it. <clears throat> I'm not, so I not send you to jail. And the court disagreed with that, but the court is giving an alternative to you, sir. As you indicated, you wanted to have some mental health treatment. I um, to get my tether off. I did what nobody does, and I gave a couple gentlemen a ride home. Actually, both of the last times. And um, even though I couldn't drink, I bought them a bottle of liquor and cigarettes and a couple extra bucks. And uh, you know, I just said, you know, I, I know how it is to get out of jail. Last time I got out, no one would even give me give me a cigarette or a light. Beer. And uh, the one guy said, "Hey, man." You do heating cooling, you got a sawzall and a cut off my tether. And I said, dude, you shouldn't do that. But now I see why he did it. Like, I don't think if I went down south, I would get picked up and brought back up here. And that's actually that more, more or less, I would rather do that than, um, than kill myself. That means I would run away and take my chances. Because I can subcontract all my work out up here and collect a very decent paycheck every week. And what, what kind of paycheck would that be? A lot of money every week. Sorry, I just heard noise outside the door and I got scared it was cops. Is it? No, it was someone with a dolly. Oh, okay. I would much rather just leave, never come back. Because here I am. The only reason why I've stayed here is to hope that I can get my name cleared from this silly little case. It's not working, no matter how hard I try. And people around me are dying. Has anybody else passed away? And Nothing offering more? me death threats. This is not the place for me. This is not the place for me. Where in, Where is not the place for you? Michigan. I'm called to spread the Great Commission, and I'm called to um, go through about the country and um, spread the gospel, the good news, the true good news, not the one of Jesus Christ, who is the Antichrist, by the way. And how long have you been doing that? Um, it's been five months, maybe six months when my, when my wife first served me divorce papers based on my change of faith, which drove me insane to the point where I wanted to go drink a little bit. This is all over a faith change, ma'am. The entirety of it is over a faith change. I got Yahweh tattooed right here behind my ear. That's the true name of God. I have an interlinear Bible behind me right now that I was going to study after we got off of here praising God that, um, Everything was just fine. But now I'm feeling a calling on something else. And it's not suicide. But I will tell you, if I'm being truthful, those thoughts do pass through my mind from time to time from Satan. I do have a shotgun, and I shouldn't. My dad gave it to me in my um, storage unit. And I didn't want it back because I know my tendencies. When did he give it to you? Well, I went to my storage unit, I believe, yesterday, and it was there when it wasn't there before. 
It's registered in my name. I bought it right from uh, Dunham's strainer box, 20 gauge Remington. And when did you do that? When did I purchase it? Yes. Um, it was Thanksgiving, like five years ago. I've only shot it one time at a, a, a milk carton that had water in it. Just to try it out in my friend's back or in my cousin's backyard who has a shooting range. Where's that? The shooting range. Over in, over in. Well, well, he has a spot where no one cares if you shoot guns because he's got a bunch of acreage over in, um, not Chelsea, um, one of those cities though, over there. Chester? Maybe What's Manchester? That? Manchester? No, no. Um, Celine, Celine. Oh. How much acres does your cousin have out there? It's only like five acres, but that's enough. You, you know, I've it? lost everything and I don't mind it. I've lost my house with 80 grand in equity in it. I bought my wife's car, the Equinox Cash for 24 grand. Every, there's so much furniture and stuff in the house. She's sitting on like 120 grand of mine right now. She can have it all. I don't care. I, I just, I don't care about any of it. I'll probably never get to see my kid. I won't get to name him. If I'm being honest, okay, tr full transparency, these next couple of days, I'm probably going to spend getting my van together to be an off-roading vehicle that I'm going to live in. Get the heck. I'm sorry, you said you're going to get your van together and do an off and make it an off-road vehicle? Not an off-road, I mean like a traveling vehicle. Oh. You mean you were, you can and I'm have it set up be my life. And what kind of band is it? Plenty of videos on how to do it. And I don't think I'm going to get picked out and get called back here based on a um, public intoxication misdemeanor charge. I believe that that would be way too much resources to bring me back up here. And you're going to travel everywhere or just to Missouri? Everywhere throughout the entire country, but the further I stay from Michigan, probably better. What's the farthest state that you've traveled to so far? I feel really bad that it's breaking up so badly. Oh, that's okay. What's the what's the farthest state that you traveled? I've only been to Vegas. Actually, that's the first time I've what first wife ever saw me got drunk was in Vegas, and that's where kind of everything um, started. Um, with her skepticism on my drinking. I know you probably remember her from the first court date we had. She's only seen me drunk one time. When did you go to Vegas? When, when were you in Vegas with your wife? I went, to the, I went to the National Bryant Dealers Convention back in October. It was right after the carrier one. Beller Young right down the road on North Line sent me. You know, oh, okay. Wife and I. Oh, good girls. Have you ever been to Missouri before? Where do you want? Where does you want to go? Yeah, Missouri. Have you been there before? Never. Well, unless you can include misery, which is what I'm experiencing right now. Yeah, I've been there plenty of times. Right. Well, I've only been in Missouri to drive through it, but <clears throat> so other than Nevada, where else have you been? What other states have you been? Well, anyway, I don't know how close we are to concluding this uh, Zoom meeting. I don't know how we're going to conclude it, but whatever you're telling me to do, I really don't want to do. And if I'm being honest with you, I'm not going to have you waste resources and send someone somewhere that I'm not going to be because the most valuable resource we have is time and I don't want to waste anybody else's. I understand that. <clears throat> I understand that, Anthony. I'm just trying to figure out how we can get you the help that you want. Oh, you, hey, I'm giving you the answer. Leave me alone, and that will be the best help you will ever give me. Okay, well, at some point I can do that, but I can't do that right now. No, you can do whatever you want. And so can I. 
And why is that? You can do whatever you want. And I can also do whatever I want. So for you to say you can't, what do you say you can or you can't? You're right. What? I'm, I'm not following your question. It's not a question. I said, whether you say you can or you cannot, you are correct. That's a life lesson. So if you say you can't, so, I believe you. Well, what are, um, what are some options you have for treatment that you'd like to have? The Bible. That's the only place I go to for guidance, period. Not a pastor. Not some man who thinks they know about the Bible. I go to scripture and God alone. My help comes from him. The maker of heaven and earth. Okay. okay. And so, and so how, how do you how think that, that he's able to, the maker of heaven and earth is able to help you? Um, is the Pope Catholic? Yeah. Is an elephant big? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's a silly question. They say there's not such thing as a silly question. That's a silly question. Can he help me? He made me from dust. No. I if I ask how can he help you? Well, you know, his ways are above my ways. And you know what? Every single day I turn a corner, I see a miracle that I didn't even think was possible. So for me to tell you that how how I think he can help me. I have no clue, but I'm super excited to find out. I'm just a man. Fallible and imperfect. Everybody's imperfect. Do you know how many people I've told about my case? And they go, there's no way that you're still on. You need a better lawyer that you need this, you need that. You know how many people have told me? There's no way you should have went to jail over what you, what you did. And here we are. Getting told I'm going to jail again. I know it's not anymore or whatever, but had I not spoke up, I would be going to jail right now. And, and not by not because Chris spoke up, because I spoke up. And nobody wants to pay attention until things get serious. As soon as I say, oh, I want to kill myself. Bam. Okay, now people want to listen. And here's Perk. Is that what it takes? In this day, and for someone to be free, they got to be crazy? It just no. makes no sense. And why were you going to put me in jail? Because, sir, you violated this court's order. my most, the person I care about most in the world just died. Why would you do that? That's ridiculous. Sir, when there's court orders that aren't followed, there are consequences. To make sure that yeah, the orders are followed. depression has been one of my biggest consequences. I've been dealing with my own consequences outside of the court. And so, how are you dealing with those consequences? I was dealing with them very well until this morning. <clears throat> okay, working, what were you doing? I was with those working, things? reading. I have a journal I've been writing in. I've been talking to people that will actually listen to me here and there. I've been experiencing love from the most random of places, like Cracker Barrel. I'm, I'm sitting in line praying with people that are feeding life into me, telling me about Philippians chapter four, verses six through eight. You know, different things like that. And then there's name is Mark, and it was the third or the second, I don't know, it might be the third gospel. There's been a lot that I've been doing. Well, nicotine helps a little bit. But I'm not allowed to do that no. in the either until I do it, and then no one says anything anymore because he's crazy. You're not allowed to nicotine. You told me quit vaping. Don't eat, don't say. Said, no, I do not say don't eat and don't vape. I do not say that. Okay. You said, Mr. Carmona, are you eating or vaping in the courtroom before we proceeded with my hearing? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought you meant as a bond condition. Well, well, I didn't. But anyway. Um, and then here I am, and you haven't said anything about it since the last eight dates, the last eight hits that I took based on the current circumstances. Well, it's a change sir, of perspective. Correct. Well, you're, sir, you're correct <clears throat> that I haven't said anything about you vaping while you're there right now. 
Yeah, yeah. But things I noticed have it. changed and since I said something that he, for some reason, Chris, I don't know. I don't know. I also didn't say what's the point of hiring a lawyer? A <clears throat> I'm sorry, what's that, sir? All right, here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. I can see the trajectory. of um, what's going to happen in the future to me if I oblige and if I don't. And it's a long road and I don't have time for this. I just don't. So after we get off this call, I'm going to start getting my stuff together. And I'm going to be heading out. I'm going to get out of Dodge. That's, that's what's happening. And what's your plan when you get out of Dodge? Doesn't matter to you. You'll never see me again. Okay, Maybe I'll write a book. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm out of here for a fact. I'll probably go to um, not to Missouri because I think that's too close and they will bring me back from there. I'm going to go much further than that. Maybe California and stay at one of those parks where all the homeless people are at. One of those communities where no one else can get in there except the person who, you know, except people who live there. Cops don't even come into them. Unfortunately, they're infiltrated with drugs. I've been staying at marinas and stuff up here, just trying to stay as incognito as possible, not because of the law, because of people who are out to get me. If you saw the amount of death threats that I've received as a result of Lauren's passing, you, you, you would not question my mental capacity at this point or my mental state, sorry. And what do you mean by that? I mean, have you ever been threatened to be killed before? Sir, I'm a judge, those threats come often. Well, how do they affect you? What do you, what do you mean? mean? When someone says something like that to you, how are you affected by it, whether you believe it's being an empty threat or not? Because I've never received something like this before. I could see someone in jail who knows about me. I'm not safe here. And whether I am safe or not, I don't feel safe and perception trumps reality. Since I don't have a tether on anymore, is it a felony to leave the state without while you're on probation? Well, it's definitely a violation of the court order. Is it a felony? In all honesty, it is not a felony to leave the state while you're on bond if you're charged with a misdemeanor. Well, Chris, you can keep the change, man. All good. I'll be fine. I'll be just fine. I know what I'm doing. Where, where is it you plan on going? Everywhere and anywhere, wherever I'm called. I can tell you it won't be Michigan. I can at least give you that. Or Ohio, because Ohio just sucks. Why is Ohio so bad? Well, first of all, it's the longest, most boring drive, part of the drive when you're going down to Florida. And uh, there's nothing really there. And... Um, I don't know, I guess the rivalry between the football teams has always been deep-seated in me for no reason at all, just to get along with people. Well, what about... Have you ever seen Joker? Have you, have you ever seen Joker from 2019? Joker? The movie? I can tell you, I from honestly have not, watched, yeah. I have not watched many movies. What's that one about? You should watch that one. What's it about? It's about mental health. Lauren showed it to me, actually. Who stars in that movie? Uh, probably one of the best actors of all time. I just don't know his name, but he's fantastic. What's that? It's actually the quote that I said when I said, what do you get when you cross a mentally ill loner with a society that doesn't care about him and treats him like trash? 
It's a joke. A book? It's a joke. Oh, a joke. He says you get what you deserve. You don't know who you don't know who's in the, you don't is somebody does somebody play the Joker? Or is the Joker just the name of the movie? Correct, yeah. Joker is the name of the movie, and the actor that played him did a really good job. And if you watch that movie, you'll get a better understanding of mental health. Lauren showed it to me right before she died. Where did you watch? She was it? raped by nine men at one time. Well, that's definitely very traumatic and she was molested by her dad. Sure. Yeah, her, she was molested by her dad her entire life. Everywhere she goes, she carried something around with her that people wanted to just sexually abuse her. And I came in there and I was so good to her. I was so good to her. And so how long were the two of you? Um... She's the reason I married Emily in the first place. She's the reason I married my first wife in the first place. She's like, yeah, you should be with her because there's nothing about her that you, she wouldn't love. Also, I was the best man at her older brother's wedding because we were best friends. I caught the garter and she caught the bouquet. We did the song and dance, the seance that led, that foreshadowed our relationship to follow. It was too short of time that I had with her. So you knew Lauren before you married your wife? I loved Lauren before I married my wife. But she was already in a committed relationship of 10 years. For 10 years? Yeah, so she wasn't an option. And so how did the two of you end up reconnecting? I wanted to reach out to my friend John um, to talk about my divorce and everything that was going on. And he'd always lift my spirits and he didn't answer the phone. He didn't answer the phone. He didn't answer the phone. So then I messaged Lauren and I said, hey, do you want to hang out and talk for a minute? Since I, Because she's the next best thing. She was like the female version of John. And I went over there and she said, just how sexually frustrated are you based on that video? And um, after that, we had that sexual encounter. She decided, I don't want another girl to ever touch you again. And this is not what we, what she intended at first, which was to hang out and, and be crazy and stuff. And she let me move in that day, which I asked Chris if I was allowed to do it. And he said, based on the separation of my first wife, it was, it was totally lawful for me to live with her and move in with her and for everything to work out. And then when she died, I missed my drug test. And then you want to lock me up. So I guess that changed his plans on how quickly I was going to leave the state because I was already going to ask for permission to go in September, but now I'm not really going to ask you for anything. Well, I remember that Mr. Shemke asked or mentioned that last time, I believe, right? No, he didn't. No, nope, he didn't. No. In fact, you barely let me get my alcohol cutter off. Or maybe you're the one that mentioned it, but I thought somebody mentioned it before. I did. And every go. time I go to say something to you, he tells me to, every time I go to say something to you, he tells me to stop talking. But anytime I say something to you, something starts to change. So I don't understand why he keeps trying to hold me down. Well, so I can tell you that. Um, when I start talking, then you start listening and then you, you start to have sort of an empathetic heart. You know, I wanted to go to law school, but I was too poor. Too poor? I started eating and cooling because I never graduated high school because juveniles screwed that up for me. You are, but you, did you get your high school diploma or did you get a GED? I got a GED. I quit high school and went the next day and took a test. And you passed it pretty well? Pretty easily? Every I would I, I did the things and then I walked out and, and people were still in there, didn't even finish theirs. Like I was done with it in half the time, didn't even need to double check my answers. It was that easy. No, you're it was much you're harder to get my state contractors up license than it was the GED. Sorry, what was that? I said I said you are a smart person. Do you still want to go to law school? Oh I know that. 
Why did you want to go to law school? I don't want anything to do with the law. Okay, fair enough. Because I like to argue. Okay. So it's a selfish ambition. It's not really to help anybody. It's just because I like to argue. So that's not really a value to me any longer. I'm only out for others, not myself. Oh, do you want treatment? No, I want to be left alone. So when you said that you would rather go to treatment than go to jail, were you being honest with me or not? I would rather go to treatment than jail, but if I'm going to get a tether put on, I'd rather be dead. Well, then how am I supposed to know that you're in treatment, sir? So here's my deal. I'm going to end up getting locked up eventually. The best case that I have, the best shot I have is just run away. Dip on out. Maybe I'll get locked up. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'm prolonging the inevitable. Maybe I'll just be just fine living somewhere completely else for my entire life. Why do you think that you're going to be locked up eventually if you are? Well, I'm just saying, like, if I'm out there and you guys put down like a triple star, like five stars, like, yes, this guy, if you pick him up, he needs to come back for sure. Well, then, yeah, maybe I'll get locked up if I get pulled over on a speeding ticket or, or uh, hazard, uh, like my, my back light's not working or something like that. But maybe I'll never get pulled over again. Maybe I'll never run into the law ever again. And maybe I'll be just completely fine. And honestly, I'd rather take the chance on that. Just like the Haitian individual who, I, who asked me to cut his tether off with a sawzall which I would not do. There was a Haitian individual that wanted you to cut their tether off? I thought he was crazy. Now I'm like, sorry, I broke up again. No, that's okay. You thought he was crazy and now you're what? Now I'm like, oh, I see your point. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever get picked up, even if I did get pulled over. I'd be like, ah, whatever. Because Why of how not serious my crime is. Because my crime's laughable. Because my whole life is a joke, hence why I love that movie so much. Why is your whole life a joke? Is your whole life a joke? I'm trying to reposition this computer. What's that? Well, look at the, the first court date. It was hilarious. All it was was crapping lying emojis the entire time. Everywhere I go, I tell jokes. Hey, what's Bruce Lee's favorite drink? What, huh? What's Adolf Hitler's favorite letter? I don't know either, but it's not Z. I got another really good one, but it's like two minutes long. What's that one? I don't know why the connection got so crappy all of a sudden. I got Verizon to pay $500 a month for my business account. And it doesn't even cooperate. I got my golf clubs. I got all my stuff. Packed it all up. What's that two minute joke? Get the heck out of here. Sell my Saturn sky. Make money for child support once the baby's born. What's your two minute joke that you said you have? Never get to be a dad. You can sell Oh my gosh, there's a cockroach in here, dude. Ew. Oh my gosh. 
Okay. Okay. See, that's another sign I need to leave. Holy cow. I don't think that this is a joke. I'm not trying to take your guys' time lightly at all. I just want you to let me go and leave me alone. That's it. Just leave me alone. Well, you said you had, a, you said you had another time to go outside. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Well, there's no punchline to it, if you want to know. Okay. Well, go ahead. All right. It's pretty good. It's a dad joke. Um, so the other day, I was on this hill doing kung fu. And um, I'm standing at the top of the hill doing all my kung fu moves. Like this. And um, I look down at the bottom of the hill, and there's this guy down there with a long, skinny, isosceles, triangle-shaped beard, really long. He's an Oriental fellow, also doing kung fu, which I recognize because it looks very similar to what I'm doing, besides the fact that his moves are much more concise. Out of nowhere, a black bull runs up on him, charging him. And um, he turns around and says, Bruce Lee's favorite drink, what's up? And the bull stops in its tracks and turns back around and runs away. And I said, oh, my gosh, how in the world did he do that? And um, so I run down there and I say, hey, how'd you do that? And he says, well, ah, yes, young grasshopper, one must know the bull line. So I go, what the heck's he talking about, the bull line? So I go home, talk it over with the Hold well, on, Anthony. Your con Anthony, your connection's uh, not so great I'm right now. And I, oh, there we go. Guys, crazy. The bull line, which I don't know what it is. I think it was a line that Deja vu. Now I'm going. Anthony, Anthony, your connection's a little bit spotty right now. Top of the one, the same moves, and I'm. So, I'm doing my. Uh, Kung Fu stuff that I was doing the first day and I looked down and out of nowhere a hawk dives down at him and he grabs the hawk with his hand um, and throws it right back off into uh, the sky and I go how the heck did he do that so I run down there and I'm like hey dude how'd you do that and he goes ah uh, yes young grasshopper one must know the hawk line I'm like what the heck is this guy talking about the hawk line he's got me totally confused and i'm like what is even kung fu you know not something that i thought it was and uh anyway i go back home and i come back the next day i'm doing my kung fu again just like i did the prior two days i look down the hill and the guy's down there and he someone runs up on him <clears throat> three dudes actually and start beating the mess out of them punching them punching them punching them no kicking just straight punches and I'm like, wow, he can't even handle this from a person. That's terrible. They run his pockets. They take all of his money. They take his belt, not the black one, the Louis Vuitton, because people care much more about money than they do about people. They run off with all of his stuff. So I run down there to go help him out. He stands up on his own, on his own accord, and he looks me in the eyes, and he tells me something I will never forget. Ah, yes, young grasshopper. There is no punchline. Oh, well, there you go. That was a night. Nice, that, was, that was pretty interesting. Pretty long. Pretty interesting. I shortened it. A tattoo artist told me that while we were getting our tattoos, and I got a kick out of it. We only kicked out of it. Your tattoo? So much fun. Oh, yeah. Right. We, got, get... we got ant tattoos. We got... What's that? We got ant tattoos, like I told you. I didn't see where you said that your tattoo was. Oh, 
Oh, there. Oh. And she got hers behind her ear, and they used to hang out all the time. And so, um, where do you go for that? Uh, I don't even remember what the place was called. I tried calling it back again, and they didn't. Um, I, I couldn't. I couldn't figure out where it was. I actually didn't like it either because when the guy was uh, giving her her tattoo, he was leaning up against her butt really bad and made her feel really uncomfortable. Did you get the tattoo behind your ear at the same at the same location? Yeah, I usually do two at a time. I got this one just recently. It says Elohim, which is the name of God on my ring finger, uh, because I don't plan on ever marrying another woman ever in my entire life. When did you get that one? Um, at the Allen Park Street Fair the other night, my friend Tony was actually working the front desk. And um, he was the one who gave me my first tattoo as a kid. And I was like, wow, I'm in the right place at the right time. So he gave me that one. And then he also gave me this one, which is Ezekiel chapter 9, verses 3 through 5, which is how I know I'm sealed by Elohim. The term saved is a non-existent thing. It's not even real um, in the context that we believe it to be. Hence why I left the church. I would talk to Chris about these things, but he doesn't believe in God. Wow. Well, all right. That's a deep subject. Wow. Well, that one's even deeper. Um, so, where does Tony work? Um, right, right next to Marshall Music at that tattoo parlor. Oh, okay. What? And so it's by. So you didn't get Tony didn't do your other tattoo with Lauren. Nope. I would. I refuse to go back to that place. Like I said, that guy disgusts me. So. Is uh, the reason why we're still on the uh, Zoom because you're going to continue to try to convince me to go to a hospital? Like, are we at the same still, like, still, mate? Because I'm not, I'm not going to go to the hospital. Why not? I'm also not going to go to jail. I'm not going to accept a tether. I'm going to, I'm just going to be a needle in a haystack, and I'm just going to be a homeless guy for the rest of my life. Well, how are you going to do your business? Conduct your business. All I do is beep, beep, boop, boop. I go beep, beep, boop, boop on my phone, send someone to go somewhere, collect the money, just, and, and, and then pay them out. I just subcontract it all. It's really easy. Making money for me is like one of the easiest things in the world. I wake up and get three grand cash just like that. And then go, and then I go out to eat. And then I sit there and figure out a way to make a little more money. And then I, I do all my Bible studying and all that stuff. Today actually is a spiritual day for me based on the lunar calendar. Do you know what the word moon means in Latin? Month. The word what? Moon, like our lunar, our oh. moon. It actually means month. And that's actually the calendar we're supposed to be going by. Not the Gregorian, not the one that was created by Pope Gregory. Because Rome is actually the fourth beast from scripture that rules with seven heads on all seven continents. You read all about Revelation. I don't know when the end of the world's coming, but if you look at this day and age that we live in, we know our world works in numbers, right? What number is Michael Jordan? What number, number is LeBron James? What year are we in? What's two divided by three? You got a calculator? What's two divided by three? I give you a hint. That's the year we're in. Six, 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 forever. That's the year we're in, and that's why I'm facing all this opposition, even though I've barely done anything wrong. Spiritual warfare, spiritual principalities of the air are attacking me, and they're playing out through the flesh. I'm not an idiot, and people would call me crazy. I get it. It doesn't make sense to most people. I don't expect it to. I'm a modern-day prophet, and I know that. Now, now I'm crazy, right? Now I'm nuts. No, I get it. 
Hey, no, if you're I'm in just, Galatians 4, 16, just, it says, as a result of me telling the truth, have I become your enemy? Everyone in my life has. Okay. So you said that you wake up and you earn $3,000 a day? It depends on the day. Out? Oh, it, it just depends on the day. Some days I uh, lose 50 bucks. Some days um, I clear 10 grand. Some days, I mean, yeah, I mean, I make ridiculous money. I'm glad I never became a lawyer. I'd be working way too hard for the same money. Well, maybe not even that much money, actually. But um, so you go out to eat every day? Uh, well, yeah, except for the days that I'm not supposed to work. I get um, bread and, and peanut butter and jelly. and just Because, like, I believe today to be the true Sabbath day based on the lunar calendar and the way that I study the moon. And so, therefore, I'm not allowed to buy work today, period. That's why I own my own business, because if I worked for somebody else, they would force me to work. And so you just dispatch other people out? Oh, do you know why I started a heating and cooling company? Huh? Why? Oh, dispatch. No, um, I wouldn't force anyone else to work for me either on a day like today either. I won't even take calls that someone wants. I go, oh, uh, yeah, you can fill out our uh, request form, but I'll look at it tomorrow. That's about it. Now, I would go run a call if it was for free because there's someone in need, but not as a transactional, not as a transactional uh, purpose. What is, what is the difference? Like, if I'm going to accept money, it's for my own gain, and I wouldn't do it for that. Like, if I was going to someone's house because I feel like they're in need of something beyond um, their uh, air conditioner being fixed, I would fix it for free. And then I would address whatever other issue. They, if they said, my husband just died and X, Y, Z, and my cooling is out. Then, yeah, I'd go there masked as I'm going there as a cooling guy. And I would hook them up. And I would pray with them, talk with them, show them scripture and spread the gospel. Because that's the way that we're supposed to be doing is meeting in people's homes. Not in big church buildings. That is the true great, great commission. And you want to know who got locked up all the time for his name's sake? Peter, Paul. John, they all got thrown in jail, just like me. You know what I did while I was in jail? Preached, preached Yahweh and Yeshua in that, in that jail. And I did remain untouched. However, I was scared as can be. I walked through the valley of the shadow of death, but I feared all the evil. So can you, I'm, I'm curious, why are there two names? You're telling me Yahweh and Yeshua? Yeshua, yes. Yeah, so the father is Yahweh. That's that's he's the maker of heaven and earth. And then we needed someone who who, who was going to make it so we don't have to sacrifice goats anymore and shed blood and someone to uh, uh, get rid of the enmity between the Jew and the Gentile. So now we are grafted in and have full access through the blood of the true Messiah, who is not Jesus. That's the Antichrist that's going to deceive everyone till the very end. That's Revelation 13, 18. And then if you read Revelation 14, 1, the very next verse, it says exactly what the seal of Elohim is. It's the father's name, which is this, Yahweh. Exodus uh, chapter 13, verses one, uh, verses 8 through uh, 10 will tell you what the true seal of Elohim is as well. The memorial between your eyes and the, the sign on your hand is when you actually partake in the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Then if you read Ezekiel chapter 9, verses 3 through 5, it's the same thing. This is the verse that I know sealed me because when my wife wouldn't touch me one night, I, I had a true revelation and experience in my own basement in my house that I'm not allowed in anymore. Which, by the way, did you know that the Messiah had no place to lay his head either? I did not. That he stayed somewhere else every single day as well. Right. Do you know what do you know what age he was when he started his ministry? 30 years old. I'm 31. I'm a little late. I'm not the Messiah, but we're called to do exactly what he did and follow in the footsteps he did. John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. Do we even know what the 10 commandments are to begin there? Most people don't. There's 10,000 promises in scripture. And most Christians can't name 10. Did you know that? There's 10,000 what? Promises in scripture. And most Christians can't name 10. Can you name the 10 commandments? Yeah. And then what are the, what are 10, what are some of the 10,000 promises? Um, well, let's just start with the rainbow. 
<laughs> do you know what the rainbow represents? What's that? It's a covenant between him and us at the time of Noah that he would never flood the earth again. Do you know what the rainbow represents now? What it covers up now? It covers up two ugly things, gay and pride, two detestable things in the sight of him. They perverted our rainbow to protect something that he hates. Threatening, threatening. How about that? You like you like apples? How about them apples? Apples? Oh, how about them apples? What's another promise? I know that. I know that. Um, then in that day, in that day when we call on his name, we will be saved. Okay. Okay. The dead and um, him are gonna arise first. That's a promise. And do you know what a prophet is? Someone who speaks the truth of something that's going to happen, and then it does. So if you're reading Revelation, you believe it to be true, and you preach it, you are a modern-day prophet by definition. Okay. So that one doesn't really make, I don't, that one I don't really know very much. What about another promise? Um, well, one of them I just told you would be that um, when we tell our kids the story of what happened during the time of Exodus, as we partake in the feast and we tell them exactly why we're doing it, that we are sealed from that day forward. Also, we're supposed to keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. All the feasts are supposed to be appointed from year to year forever, period. And Easter is not one of those days. In fact, Easter is as, as pagan as it gets. Same thing with Christmas. And I bet you, I bet you Chris Shemke, who doesn't even believe in God, celebrates Christmas. So why do you think some people celebrate Christmas if they don't believe in God? You know, I don't know why people who believe in God celebrate Christmas. <laughs> or 4th of July. To that point. Why is that? Because they're traditions of men and scripture specifically says don't speak on them. Don't don't do them. Here's another thing. Do you know what the word pharmaceutical actually means in Latin? What what word? Sorcery. Pharmaceutical. Oh, pharmaceutical. Okay. It means, I mean, it's it, means, it means it means sorcery. Yes. And so when we intake, when we ingest these pills, which by the way is what killed Lauren, because she took her doctors prescribed her benzos, the fentanyl that she got mixed together, there was no bringing her back. None. No Narcan, no nothing could have you, saved her. But if you if somebody uses fentanyl, even by itself, isn't that likely to um I'm not an expert on any of these chemicals. I'm just telling you one thing that I oh. just learned based off of her death. Oh. I'm saying that oh. any type of pharmaceutical is bad. It's bad news bears. All of it. Okay. And that's why I refuse. Like when I'm going to get therapy or whatever, they're going to try to tell me I need to take a drug and I'm going to be in strict opposition to that anyway. So it's almost even pointless to go unless someone's just sitting there to hear me out like you are right now. This is therapy for me. Do you feel any better or not really? 100%. Oh, I feel, yes. At the beginning of this, I felt depressed, scared, and now I feel empowered and alive. Okay. However, that doesn't change the trajectory of what I'm going to do. Which is what? I'm leaving the state. Figuratively and metaphorically. I mean, physically and metaphorically. I'm leaving this state of mind and I'm leaving it here in Michigan. But you haven't figured out where you're going to go other than you know you're not going to Ohio? Right. Correct. I might travel through Ohio for a little bit of time, but after I get out of Ohio, I mean, no, I am not really. Ohio is pretty boring. I'd rather go to like Arizona, New Mexico. Te Texas is nice. I love the Riverwalk. Um, I've never been to California, but that's pretty evil over there too. Hollywood is like the worst. I can say I've never been to California. Yeah, I'll probably go. No, I can't afford it because I only make Michigan money. Wow. I got the longboard right here though. I was riding it last night. It was Lawrence. I kept it.
Yeah. Is there a lot of space for you to ride it or just in the parking lot? Well, and over this little hill and stuff. And all. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's fun. The parking lot was nice by itself. But yeah, there's to go over freeways and stuff to get to a gas station. This isn't when I was a juvenile, I cut off the tether and tried to run away to Florida. It was just a house tether, but we, we actually tried to run away to Florida. We got picked up in Bowling Green on some, on some bicycles. The only thing that I really hate that I'm leaving behind is the fact that my wife is having a kid. Other than that, I got nothing here. Just that baby. That's all. all. And that sucks. Like big time. But I mean, honestly, if this if this court date would have went completely different from the beginning, I would be staying here. I would be obliging to everything. As soon as you said jail, snapped my brain in half. Like, I'm nope. Okay, I see where I'm being called now, and it's not jail. Jail is not meant for me. Mental institution is not meant for me. I'm totally fine. I handle life just fine. I'm not a violent individual. I know when to sit down and shut up. I know what I'm doing, but I'm getting treated like an animal, and I don't, I just, I'm done with it. I'm done getting drunk. I'm not going to ever use another drug. Simple as that. I'll pay you guys whatever you want. Just let me go. You'll never see me again. You'll never hear me again. Never see me again. Chris can keep the change. I'm good. I will seek professional help. Hmm. So if you want to seek professional help, why aren't you why don't you want to do it right now? You said you have an appointment. Because I don't tomorrow. want to under the supervision or under the thumb of somebody else. I don't want to be holding and having a tether on anymore. No, I'm not doing it anymore. I refuse. <laughs> Respectfully, I just refuse. I feel I've done everything up until this point to the best of my ability. The reason why I missed the drug test, I have no clue. Honestly, I would wake up, I'd call every day. I could tell you the colors that were today. It was a green, uh, aqua, and, and like amber or something like that. As long as it wasn't pink. By the way, Lauren's favorite color was pink, and that's my color. You believe that? No, that's something. You know, I don't even need glasses. I was just trying to look smart. I was trying to blend in with you guys. Well, I only take I don't my... need glasses. I have 20-20 vision. My eyes are just fine. These are blue light glasses. Someone told me they look good. So I was like, okay, oh, I'll wear them. Well, that's good. My, my eyes are shot, so I don't have great vision. I have impeccable vision. I could be a pilot. Have you ever thought about being a pilot? <laughs> no, I'm afraid of heights. So you've never flown anywhere? Well, yeah, I've definitely flown, but like my palms are like sweating like crazy and I usually take a couple of shots. Is that how you got out to Las Vegas was by flying? Yep, that was super fun. You got to see the canyons and all that stuff. Yep. Frickin' Vegas, man. I'll tell you what happens in Vegas did not stay because we carried that crap back home. I do miss what my first that? wife. But I honestly miss more and much you? more. How many times have you been married? I it's just Emily, the girl that showed up that first day, super pretty girl, pregnant. Like she was like, I picked a good one. I know I did. Like I found her when she was 18. She was singing and playing guitar on stage at church. And I was like, they have angels here. And um, I pursued her despite the fact that she should have never gotten with me. She did. And uh, I was only six months out of jail when I first got with her. Six months. And um, we were together for seven years. We went to Disney five times in the past three years. When did you go to Disney? Which time? I mean... Five times out of the past three years, I wrote Guardians of the Galaxy. I wrote all of it. Like, it was all super fun. But I, I treated her special, as special as you could treat anyone. And she still left me because I changed from Jesus to Yeshua. 
that's that's why she left. And she came to the courtroom and said he's been drinking, smoking weed, and that's got to be why his brain is where he is. On, on uh, I was a I was a youth leader at the church for the teenagers for five years. They trusted me around the kids to teach them out of the Bible. But Bible says those who teach are going to be weighed more heavily. And as soon as I found this new truth, I said I need to be done with this. Why is that? Why is that? Why are they waiting Because I was teaching falsehoods out, out the wazoo that I, I believe to be true for the past 18 years of my life. 19 years. Sorry, I'm 31 now. I'm a very mathematically minded individual and I love words. Lauren, the one that just passed, had a 4.3 in uh, GPA in college and she was a literature major. Where did she go to college? Columbus. Where she was raped. And so when was the last time you went to Disney? Um, it had to be like October. No, no, October was Vegas. It was uh, September. Yeah, we went to Disney. Then we went to Vegas. We went to go up to Tawas. Like we would do it all because I run my own business. I take care of everything for Emily. I took care of everything for Lauren too. Like I said, I run about a half a million dollar business that equates to about $200,000 a year after taxes and everything based on my profit margins of what I sell and what I do. Okay. My wives don't ever need to work, but yet they think they, Lauren was good. Emily tried to fit me and conform me into a box and a mold of what she thought a husband should be, which is not the way that it works. It's the pecking order is God, husband, wife, then kids. Right now, she's putting the kids above me, which is why everything's come to such destruction. She gets, she gets it wrong. She doesn't, you know, I told her that we're unequally yoked. You know what she thinks that means? Something to do with eggs. Oh, what does it mean? So when you have one bull, it can pull a thousand pounds. How many can two bulls pull? 3,000 pounds. What, what connects them? A wooden yoke. If you're unequally yoked, you're walking like this. If you're unequally yoked, it's not going to work. Okay. But she agreed to in sickness and in health, which was a lie. You know what lying is? It's a sin. You know what sin is? Death. She brought death to our marriage. And it's all playing out right here. It's just, you know, it's all good. I get it. So where were you a youth leader at? North Line Church in Taylor. Ryan Bettinger is the main pastor. He's one of my best friends for many years. He's got a much lower handicap than me, too. I taught his kids. Three of them. Lexi, Allie. I can't say the last one because he's a juvenile still. I was the favorite youth leader. Out of all of them, how long has it been? How long has it been since you stopped um, being March. a youth leader? I stepped down in March. Of twenty three. Might have been, might have been April actually. It was just yes, it was just. This all happened just now. All of this, the past five months of my life, I've been told I should write a book about. And what do you think about that? I think that just speaks to how ridiculous everything that's been happening to me really is due to the fact that I really haven't done much. I smoked marijuana, which was legal at the time before I got this pro, uh, uh, tether. Um, bond. I'm not even sentenced yet. Like we're at the point where I'm not even sentenced. It's just, and if it was Dickerson, I would have been like, throw away the key. I don't want probation. I want nothing. Just sentence me now. Put me in Dickerson. I'll get my hot Cheetos and ramen noodles and I'll be fine. This place, Wayne County? Oh, heck no. Heck no. Never again. And I got new side. I, if I would have got old side, I'd be dead right now. I will run for my life like a gazelle does from a cheetah. Did you know a gazelle cannot run a cheetah? Even though a cheetah is the fastest like animal on earth? You want to know why? Why? Because they both have two different agendas. One's running because it's hungry and the other one's running for its life. And that's scripture. Again.
I base everything I do and think off of the word. And when I don't, destruction comes about every time. That's why I get in trouble for the most minute of things. The tiniest little thing I do incriminates me. What, what do you mean by that? I got drunk in a city full of bars. Here we are three months later, still talking about it. Trying to lock me up again. At the beginning of all this, trying to lock me up again. For getting drunk in a city full of bars because I was going through a divorce and I depended on alcohol, which I shouldn't have done. And I recognize that. I do recognize that actually getting drunk is a sin. I should not have gotten drunk. And I've paid for it dearly already. And it's just getting worse and worse and worse. And it's unfair, completely unfair. I didn't even drive. I wasn't even driving. And there's two sides to every story. Here's the thing. People were saying I was acting crazy. You think I just acted crazy for no reason? No, I was provoked. And I'm not going to get into that, but it was evil what was happening to me. And that's why I needed to get out of there. And I wanted my keys back, which I never got. And the keys were to your home or your van? My Saturn Sky, my five-speed stick. Drop top. The one that I need to sell now that I can't enjoy anymore. Why is that? Because I'm leaving the state. I can't pack it up in the van. It's going to serve me no value any longer. I might as well keep it in the bank for child support purposes. Have you ever seen the movie Pig with Nicolas Cage? That's a new one. He just lives in the woods with the pig because his wife died and the pig represented his wife. And that was it. And then someone stole his pig and then he was alone. It's a good movie. I'm only telling you about it because I don't think you'll ever watch it, but it was good. Well, Lauren showed me that one too. That pig. What's that? Pig. That's the, that's the name of the movie? Pig, like swine, pig, yeah. Swine. Which, by the way, is not food. You should never eat pig. It's disgusting stuff. And you are what you eat, so inadvertently. Quit eating pig. It's my biggest suggestion. So I've, never, I've never heard of the movie Pig. Oh, it's so good. I think it's on Netflix. But you should watch Joker also. It'll help, I, it'll, it'll help I, you to understand mental illness. Like, there's two sides to every story. Sometimes three or four. Well, I, I, I think that there's three sides to every story, at least. <clears throat> yeah, no one never gets to listen to mine. And, you know, we did today. That's cool. I appreciate this amount of time that you've given me to talk. Have it you've had that time to talk. <clears throat> so I know that today you're not, it's not a work day for you. What are your plans tomorrow after your appointment? I have multiple calls, multiple people who want me at their establishments to address their HVAC issues. Where do your, where are your clients usually at? Um, everywhere in Michigan. I mean, have you ever Googled my business before? No, I have not. I have the best. I have the best one downriver. The absolute. I own the best company downriver based on Google. That's why I get called so much. I had a 5.0 rating before Lauren passed. After she passed, I got a bunch of um, weird things. People saying he kicked my dog, or don't let him near your children, or just all these false accusations of bull. And uh, it still has a 4.9 rating like it's really hard to tear down what i've built but god's helped me build i could literally just sell my business based on the revenue 
the, I, the track record of revenue and the amount of regular clients I have. But that would be silly because if I could just make residual income, not residual, I still would have to dispatch. So I technically still got to work a little bit, but I like being involved in the business that I put together. You know, my initials are AC. You're correct. Yeah, that's that's it's kind of meant for air conditioning, uh, repairman and replacing. I, yes, I picked that up for air yeah. conditioning. Everything happens for a reason. Sometimes it's hard to see it in the moment. No tether, no jail for me, and I'll do anything for that not to happen. And I'm just being honest with you. I'm not going to say to your face, I'm not going to tickle your ear with some type of lie and say, oh, yeah, I'm going to go there and be there and da, da, da. No, I'm not. I'm not. What do you mean? I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you I'm going to go somewhere and do something that I'm not going to do, like go to a hospital or anything like that. In fact, I'm probably not going to go to that therapy appointment any longer because I already told you where it was at. And what time? <laughs> no, you didn't tell me what time. And you just indicated team wellness. No, I believe there's multiple the recording, locations. You'll find it. I believe there's multiple locations. I got three scheduled. I already know what it feels like to look over my shoulder everywhere I go. And um, that's going to be exponentially increased if I stay here in Michigan. So, and I know your capability and tendencies. Which and that's why? not a stab at you. It's just, it's, it's lock people up for petty things. So I'm just calling a spade a spade. It's no disrespect. I mean, it is what it is. It's just doing a job. But I've been told Judge DeSanto in Wyandotte is the worst place, the worst judge you want to stand in front of. And I can attest to, yeah, that's facts. That is big facts. I've never dealt with, I mean, I've been in and out of the system for years before uh, seven years ago, for years. And I've never had it this bad. Nowhere near, not even close, bar none. You like that one? Bar none, Chris. <laughs> no bar exam for me. That's a pun. Puns are fun. So for the 15th, you might as well put no show. So you're telling me you're not going to show up at all? I'm telling you, I'm leaving within the next day or two. I'm going to be out of here. Probably a thousand miles distance from, from this current location. Yeah. I don't have a passport either. I will be in America. I've never been to New York. No. That sounds cool. My friend uh, Dylan, he started an ice cream shop and he's all, he's like TikTok famous. It's called uh, Catching the Cream or whatever that is. He's got like 11 million followers on TikTok. He, he's from here. And I always said, oh, I want to go see your shop, dude. And so he was supposed to make our first, our wedding cake, mine and my first wife, but he was too big and mm -hmm. busy. He didn't, he didn't make it? No. No, because he already had like 350,000 followers at that point. It was too too big for us. 350 what? 1,000 followers on TikTok. Now he's at 11 million or oh. something. Yeah. Gary V helped him start his business. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool story. And where is he located? Somewhere in New York. I don't know. Somewhere in Times Square or whatever. I don't know. But here's one thing I will say. As a result of me being on the run, so to say, you best believe my nose is going to be clean everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. I, they're... Yeah. And I have no business getting any other girls pregnant with uh, my current state with the law. So, you know, First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 says it's better for a man not to touch a woman. And I, I clearly see why. 
And why is that? If, if it weren't for Emily, if it weren't for any of the girls that I got with based on, because I can't shut, I can't handle my own lustful desires. Um, if I would have never gotten with a girl, I would have never dealt with a divorce, would have never led me to depression. I would have never uh, gotten with Lauren. There wouldn't be all this destruction in my past as a result of me thinking I needed a woman. I, I'm, I'm much better off just clinging to God and, and controlling my lustful temptations. And I know it sounds good on paper, but I've been practicing it. Like, and like I, yeah, I have nothing but pure intentions from this day forward, but I am not doing this anymore. Can't, I can't. And what is this? Anything to do with this judicial system and why not any recommendation, unless it's, Hey, you're good. Hopefully we never see you again. Shake hands, peace out. You're, you have a fine of $1,500 to go. Come please pay that. And I'd be up there and I'd go pay it. And I'd be, I'd get the heck out of there. I'd tell the probation officer, sorry for being rude a couple of times. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry for everything. I'd say, Chris, that was fun. You know, I give you a reference for the next time you need that air conditioner fixed in the future. If you ever need it, not that I've ever touched it before. I'm just saying, if you ever needed it, I'm not kidding. It, it, either way, even if I got off or I don't get off, I'm leaving the state. Period. Point blank. I'm gone. I have a calling somewhere else that's very important. And, you know, if things don't pan out, maybe it's possible. I might just be like, you know what? I'll just come turn myself back in and, and call it a day. That didn't really work out. You know, I was wrong. I'm not afraid to admit when I'm wrong. A wise man accepts correction. I've received enough correction from you guys. Enough, more than what enough. Is, what correction is that? You guys sent me to jail. Dude, I'm, I mean, sorry, ma'am. Have you ever stepped foot in that jail? Just to observe where you're sending people? Wayne yeah. County jail? Yeah, yeah, like, have you ever, ever observed where you're sending people? Just went in there and saw the mold on the ground or the cockroaches crawling around or the violence that takes place, the blood on the walls, the toilets full of poop that you can't even use. The kind of food that they give you, the way that they give it to you, they throw it on the floor. Have you ever observed where you're sending people? It's hell on earth. I have not seen that. <clears throat> Chris has seen it. That's why he was trying to go to bat for me a little bit to say, hey, please don't. But it wasn't really going to bat. It was more like the T-ball from a four-year-old. Last time, the only reason why I got my tether off is because I mentioned it at the last moment, and then he came on my behalf and spoke up. But had I not said anything, he was just going to be passive and let it go. And then give me some bullcrap line of reasoning why, well, she would have done this or she would have done that. I don't believe that. I don't believe it at all. I believe that this is a monopoly system that's that's I'm in the loop of that I need to get out of. What do you mean like by I that monopoly breathe. system? A monopoly system. You guys sold me alcohol, then locked me up for it. Who's you guys? The court, I, the court didn't sell you any alcohol, did we? Why not? Oh. It's a big monopoly. Oh, and then if you need your car towed, who, who tells it? I, the two officers that were uh, sending me away, the broke kids, their dad. It's a whole monopoly. It's a whole system. I see it. I'm not dumb. The whole thing is just designed for failure of anyone who doesn't actually live in wine out or know the police. Did you eat breakfast today? And nobody cares. Nobody cares. No one cares. We just no say one cares about what? Well, the rules. You're eating in the courtroom. Because you're above the law. I'm not above the law. Aren't we not supposed to eat in the courtroom? You're correct. I'm fine. I have a snack because I did not eat breakfast this morning. Well, we can justify anything. We can justify anything. And that's the most dangerous thing that we have is justification because I can justify anything that I do. Did you eat breakfast this morning? No, I don't eat breakfast. I go out and earn something before I eat. 
Back in the day, you couldn't eat until you went out and killed a lion and brought it home to the family. I have to go out and kill a lion before I deserve to eat a thing. And how are you going to do that? Well, it's a figurative statement. I, I have to go out I, and I provide. That. Today's a spiritual day. I provided for myself yesterday. That's called preparation. How are you going to eat lunch? More than likely. I don't know the future to that extent. Maybe I'll fast for the rest of the day and be in prayer because I believe in fasting and prayer. In fact, I'm a vegetarian. It's a lifelong fast. I just started right before Lauren passed. I love vegetables, which is ironic that she was in a vegetative state for her last couple of days. Now that's funny. I don't mind if you eat. I just, you know, it is what it is. Whenever we point the finger at someone, we got three pointing back at ourselves. Amen. I've heard that statement before. Just saying. And so you said that <clears throat> you haven't spoken to your dad much? Not anymore. He has me blocked because I call him out on his bull crap too. And he doesn't like it because when we're shed the light, we want to cling to our darkness. Again, Galatians 4, 16. Now that I've told you the truth, have I become your enemy? Look at that. Someone just texted me. Hey, can you loan me 40 until Friday? I just gave another friend a thousand dollars the other day. He said, Hey, can I get a thousand dollars so I can get a trailer for my business? All big, um, all big, uh, I forget what the business is called. Yes, going on by, man. Bam. Thousand bucks right out of my pocket. Cash. That's what I do. And I said, don't worry about paying me back because if you don't pay me back, we're still gonna be friends. Money doesn't get between friends. Freaking cockroach. <laughs> You ever seen one of these? It's a bug with salt. Fill it up with salt. Oh, shoot, the safety's on. Boom, no more cockroach. That thing was nasty. They're way worse in county, let me tell you. And I can't bring that in there with me. Well, aren't you, <clears throat> the room that you're in isn't very clean? I thought it was pretty nice. This is actually the uh, most therapeutic uh, past four days that I've had was uh, being in this hotel room. Um, everywhere else I've stayed, I've had problems with every single person I've ran into. I only stay one place a night. Every single time, there's something that just happens that I rub against the grain the wrong way. And it's just but the signs are telling me, oh, all right, time to go. Time to go, time to go, time to go. But there is one place that I need to go. And uh, I expect big things to happen. Prophetically, I do believe the sky is going to be rolled back, peeled back. Like that, it's called the heavenly scrolls, the constellations. That's our actual Bible. And um, he's going to descend on us. The word rapture does not exist in scripture. It's not a real word. We're going to see the dead in him rise first. Lauren will be one of them. Rise up. And then we're going to have a tough time here on earth. A very tough time here on earth. The true followers, the true believers. And I need to be around those like-minded believers. The only thing that I feel terrible about is to go meet up with this like-minded group of believers and conceal from them the fact that I'm on the run. I, I am going to be carrying, bearing that weight, and I'm probably just going to have to be honest with them because um, the truth sets you free. For instance... You were going to lock me up. Then I told you the truth. Now you're saying I'm not going to lock you up. The truth set me free in a very small way at first. I mean, we're off to a decent start. But all I did was tell you the truth. And that truth being what? My intentions. At first I said, oh, I had suicidal thoughts. You're like, whoa, pump the brakes. If I wouldn't have spoke up and told you the truth, I'd be going to jail right now. And that's a promise of was scripture. You asked for another one? Was that you asked truth? for another promise of scripture? The, tr the truth sets you free. Which, by the way, he is the truth. The way, the truth, and the life. And so, is what you said earlier the truth? Uh, there is one part that I did, I did. I will take back. I was there when Lauren did the cocaine. That is the one thing that I will come clean about right now. And um, the her, her head fell into my lap. And her lips went blue. And the other day, a song turned on and said, Baby Blue Ain't Your Color. You know that song? Yeah, that, that had me break down. And uh, because I was a youth leader in the church, and CPR certified, not that serious, just a four-hour course or whatever. And I administered CPR on her. 
and it, it, it didn't work. If, the, if I were you, I would stop talking about the details because everything you're saying can and will be used against you. So this is not what this proceeding is about. So just your advice, my advice to you is I would not go into detail about this. Thank you. And so everything else you said earlier today was the truth? Everything else was the truth. But I witnessed death. However, I spoke with Wayne County and there's no, no one's being charged with anything like that. I get what Chris is saying that I shouldn't be around an environment like that. And that's probably part of my bond conditions. However, I didn't know what she was doing. I didn't know that she had that stuff. I walked in on that. Now I wear her ring on my chain. It fell off during CPR from the, uh, the EMS. So what kind of ring is that? It's Opal. I got it over from Blowfish Studios. It was a birthstone. When did you get it? When did you get it? Um, the day after she said yes, I actually proposed to her with shoes. That's my love language. Shoes. Shoes? I proposed to her with a pair what of kind? Yeezys. Yeah, shoes. Yeezys? Yeezys. Yeah. I gave, I had a lot of Yeezys. I had about 12 pairs of Yeezys and I give them away. And I usually give them away to someone I'm going to witness to because it breaks down walls because most people can't afford Yeezys. I had way too much stuff and I got rid of it. I started to remove all the puffery in my life. I got rid of my Pokemon stuff. I had like a $5,000 Pokemon collection. Just gave it away to kids. I gave away all my uh, shoes. And the reason why I did shoes, the reason why I used shoes is because there's a scripture that says how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. Anyone that wore a size 11, I'd say, what size shoe are you? 11? Ooh, do you like Yeezys? Boom. But her specifically, I proposed to with Yeezys just because it's part of my love language. And I don't believe in the traditions of men. Why did I have to propose with a ring? I didn't have to. I proposed with shoes. And the two became one flesh. And that is what marriage is technically, not the piece of paper that follows. That's just for legality. I will say shoes are interesting. I've never, never thought of it like that. Never, Everybody has their I've own. I've never heard of. The whole point is, she said yes. And uh, for that, I'm forever grateful. She is who I should have been with from the beginning. You still talk to her brother, who you said, I think you said is your friend? He stopped talking to us the day we got together. He didn't get to speak to her one time in the last few months of her life because he rejected her and our relationship. So now he bears that guilt. He'll never talk to me again. And he was my best friend. We were the best man in the We've been friends. We used to work at the Mancinos over there. And we used to work at the Mancinos together over there in Wyandotte um, back when I started heating and cooling school. And he was the manager. And uh, we worked under Mike. I don't know if you know Mike was the owner. And um, we used to hang out and drink alcohol and have fun and um, smoke weed. And um, it was about 10 years ago. However long I've been doing heating and cooling, 11 years. Yeah, something like that. I used to take the bus over there in Wyandotte down 4th Street, take it all the way to Melbourne, and then my friend would drive me from Melbourne to Dorsey over in Wayne, which is actually around the block from where Lauren's house was. So it all came full circle. Every day I went to Lauren's, I saw Dorsey. I saw the school I went to for HVAC, which was hilarious to me. How long ago was that? Then I went to heating and cooling school. Yes. That was the same time frame. I started working at Mancino's when I started heating and cooling school. I quit Wendy's and went to Mancino's in the middle of HVAC school 11 years ago. We used to go across the street to Johnny Max and then buy alcohol, come back, and I'd work. I wasn't driving. I'd be making um, pizza. And um, just I was reminded of it last night because I had a Lunchable all cheese. 
cheese pizza, monster ball. They reminded me of Mancino's. Do you, how long did you work at Mancino's? Uh, probably about not even a year. Yeah, not even a year because HVAC school was only nine months long. So as soon as I finished that, I went and got a job at Atar Enterprises over there on 4th Street. Another Canadian coin company. For $9 an hour. <laughs> Less than I was making at Manzino's. Which is also hilarious. But you got to start somewhere. You do have to start somewhere. Yeah. You do have to start somewhere. So you don't want to get treatment anymore either? Not with a tether. So can I... Um, do you mind if I step off for just one moment so I can double check how that would work? Absolutely. Okay. I want to step off for just one second, okay? No problem. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> Anthony, um, I know you want me to not send you to jail and not tether you. So I'm just, I was trying to find out how I could do that and make sure that you're coming back on Monday. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> as long, <laughs> mm, you know that, you know what, uh, Zoom is good. I will be here for a Zoom meeting. I enjoyed this conversation. Can I tell you one thing before, you want to know how, everywhere I go, there's always a sign that I'm in the right place. And you know what I just noticed for the first time during this conversation? I, I've been going back to Hebrew roots on everything. And I called Lauren Elisheva. You know why? Because her middle name was Elizabeth. And we were both baptized at Elizabeth Park. I'm going to leave it at that. But I just appreciate that your name's Elizabeth in this moment, regardless of what else you're going to say. Okay. When were you baptized at Elizabeth Park? Um, about uh, three weeks before she was, and she, and she was just baptized. Oh, my God. It was beautiful. My dad did it. I recorded it, and it's on my Instagram. And she even claimed the last name Carmona in that video. He said, I, I hereby baptize Elizabeth Lauren. What's your last name? She says, Car Carmona. It wasn't long ago. I got baptized in the proper spirit. And in the same way that I've been yeah. witnessing. It, yeah, my dad. In the same way that I've been witnessing to you guys. Is how I did it in jail. And everywhere I go, all I do is live by the word of my testimony. So even in this moment, I thought that this was going to be super crappy. Just a Zoom meeting court date. But you guys have given me a platform to actually speak truths from the Bible and you never know who you're going to get to talk to about what you need to talk about. I'm even thankful for this moment. Even though it doesn't seem like it. Well, I'm glad that you feel better that you've been able to. But so how do we resolve the issue at hand? What's your, what's your suggestion? Well, I, here's my suggestion. I'll talk to you again on the 15th and I'll tell you about all the therapy and AA and whatever else I've done. And then you can make your determination on whether or not I've gotten time served. And I'll pay whatever costs and fines that day of, there will be no payment plan. I will pay everything that day. And you'll never hear me again, unless it's something awesome or you need HVAC work. Cause I'm fantastic at what I do. I was upset that they talked to you. Sorry. I'm sorry. I, I was I was upset that the therapist told me that I'm only allowed to get one hour. I was upset about that. I was like, I need at least three for my first session. I guarantee it. Not in a group. I need a one-on-one. -on -one, and I'm hoping that I get, I'm hoping my therapist is someone very special. So and I want to apologize just to Chris for anything that I might've said this. What do you mean? Go ahead. You can continue. Well, first, I just want—I want to apologize to you and to Chris for anything that I may have said that was hurtful or insinuating. I am sorry because I'm not—you know—they say hurt people hurt people in AA, and I definitely am guilty of that. But I've been working on kindness. 
it, you know, being smart is a blessing and a curse because I tend to just twist what people say. I'm really good at that. And I hate that I am. It's actually disgusting. Why is that? Why is it disgusting? Well, because I, my ego causes me to think I'm better than others and to mess with people for no reason. And now that I'm beginning to understand firsthand mental illness, I realize that I'm just so wrong in so many levels, and I have been for a long time. But I'm getting better, and I'm going to continue to get better. The jail is not going to build my character. Treatment, treatment may help. I, that's what I need. I need to talk. I need to write things down. I need to listen to other people. I need to accept correction. Because a wise man accepts correction. And a wise man also understands that what he does and what happens to him are connected. The fool believes they're disconnected. That's another scripture. That's some Proverbs. I'm not sure which what reference it is. So is there but yeah, that would be that would be my oh, go ahead. Sorry. that would be my hope is that um is that you, the next court date you're like you know what i see your point you're all good you messed up you got a lot going on sometimes it's hard to make phone calls see i don't work a nine to five job so it's hard for me to make sure i'm gonna make it to a specific the, the one okay i can remember the one that i did miss on the 13th was because i was at a job in st Clair shores and there was no way for me to make it. So I had to, the person out there was being very upset with me. And they said, if you don't finish the job today, I'm suing you. So now I was caught between a rock and a hard place. Make it to my drug test or get sued. Oh, I got an expensive lawyer. Not super expensive, but I paid more than I ever had for a lawyer. And I was like, I'll be fine. No. No. I should have said, screw that job. But then again, I could have got sued for that. But that would have been a civil matter. And yeah, you know, it's just this whole complex I went through in my brain. And I said, I might as well finish the job while I'm here. So I can get paid and not get sued. And did you finish that job? Oh yeah, I got paid big bucks. Oh yeah, a lot of money, a lot of money. I take a picture of it and put it on my Instagram story. Again, ego, I'm wrong for that. I'm wrong for that. Customers typically pay me cash. And I, I mean, I, and I report it, but it's just really nice because I always have cash. Except ironically, the last time I went to jail, I didn't have my wallet. So I had no commissary, no way to get commissary or anything. My dad, remember, I don't know if you remember Mr. Carmona, you're driving around the parking lot and he said he didn't have pants, but he had shorts on. And it was like really funny. Um, he had to go that. to my house and I'd tell him. Yeah, I had to, yeah, you, you have an impeccable memory. He, um, he said, or he, I told him where my cash was when he found it and we were on the phone. He was like, oh my gosh. I looked like a drug dealer or something. <laughs> How much cash that I leave in a spot um, for, and my wife, she had full access to it. Emily, like, I think she's a fool for leaving me just because I got drunk one night and claim a different faith, but. I've supplied her out the wazoo. That was when you were in Vegas? Um, yeah. Yeah, the one that I went to Vegas with, that one, yeah. Lauren got it. Lauren was like, oh, no, this guy, I don't even need to work. Like, she sat on the couch all day and played with her dog because that's what she needed because her mental health was not there. She saw therapists often. She actually diagnosed me before my therapist did. And what did she that? diagnose you with? um bipolar uh, major depressive and the worst case of ocd she's ever seen in her life and she understands all of it because she's been in and out of all of it like she actually gets it she doesn't need college to to understand mental illness she knows it and that's why i'm suggesting to you that movie joker it's a very good movie a very good movie i'd say probably my favorite movie outside of anything like spiritual i'm probably gonna watch it after this well, I wrote it down so I don't forget the name of it. Amazing. Just even if you even if you just watch the ends, just watch the last half hour of it. It's so good. So good. Even whether you like Batman or not, it's so good. 
Can you understand the movie with only watching the last half an hour? No, you should watch the whole thing for context. Like, honest, and you're a smart lady. Like, and I'm not saying that to puff you up or nothing. Like, when you watch this, like, you're probably gonna cry. Not for me or Lauren or anything. Like, just in general. And he doesn't die in the end. Like, it ends up happy. It ends up happy. Oh, Chris probably hasn't seen it either. It's a good one, Chris. Nightcrawler. That's another good one. But anyway, I've seen it, Anthony. Joker. So good. So good. So good. So what are your plans? I mean, how long are you planning on staying at the motel or the hotel that you're at? I know, right? Cockroaches implies that it could have been the motel. But um, um, well, I mean, if everything's going to move smooth, cordial, and I'm going to avoid jail and tether, I'll do whatever you want. Honestly, I'll stay here. I'll do whatever you want. But I do have a trip that I, it's a 10 day camping trip that I need to go to. It's not some crazy. Right, Missouri. Yeah. It's, there's no, like, we're not doing drugs and all that or nothing. I can even send you videos about what it's about. It's a spiritual gathering that I crave that I need, I'm called to go to. And I'll be back from there. Like the whole trajectory of my life could change. I won't be on the run. If, if I, I want to be here for my kid, I want to run my business. I want, I want to function properly in society, but the moment I heard jail, I recoiled from it like a hot flame. I'm like, ah, no, no way, gone. Goodbye. That's, a, that's actually an AA reference. We recoil from alcohol like uh, our hands to a stove. Bill W. wrote that. Who wrote that? Bill W. Wilson, Bill Wilson, the uh, founder of AA. Oh. It's in the big book. I don't trust the big book. I trust, I trust my Bible. Oh, sorry. And then this one, this is the one that I study for um, the uh, translation um, misinterpretations and, and transliterations based on our division through language. I've done some very deep study in, um, in scripture and uh, yeah. I know where I'm supposed to go. I won't run. I won't run if, if, and I want to see therapists. I want, I want to talk to people. I want good. I want truth. I want life. But I won't lie to you. Sometimes life becomes so overwhelming and overbearing. And traumatic. I agree with you. It sure is. It sure does. Jail was horrible this last time. Horrible. Horrible. I was scared I wasn't going to make it out. For good reason. The intimidation I received was very convincing. And they thought it was funny. I specifically told to my face, I hate white people. And that the dude had HIV and he was going to bite me in the jugular. First moment he got. And I said, well, there goes my life if that happens. For one specific purpose, so he can get out of quarantine and go to Bam Bam, so that way he can get out. Just like I would have just been like a, a tool to be used, just for him to get out of the room that he was in because he was uncomfortable for a moment. It was the worst, the the worst. I have no Ill, Ill intentions for anybody, not even myself. But fear is... You said, you said you did earlier. That's why I was concerned. I wanted to catch your attention, and it was truthful. However, 
do I think I could actually put a gun in my mouth and pull the trigger with my towel? Well, who knows? Who knows what anyone's capable of these days? When people are desperate, they'll do anything. If I go to jail, I consider myself already dead. I just don't want to suffer during the process. So yes, I would rather die than go to jail. That is very, that is very much. Now, any other jail? Fine. Dickerson? I'd be like, oh, this is fun. I'm going to work out. I'll do a bunch of chin-ups. I don't need cigarettes. I don't need nicotine. This would be like a cleanse. This ain't Dickerson anymore. Dickerson was fine. Totally fine. Wayne County? No. They need to level that thing, build the soccer field, split between misdemeanors and felonies, put you with like, um, not like-minded, like violated, like offended individuals, not killers with public intoxicants. That was horrible, horrible. I would not wish it on my worst enemy. I know so. I know a rapist right now who's walking around free, and I don't have the heart to send him there. How about that? I was like, he'll get, he'll get, he'll get it so bad here. It's just not even fair. By the way, so I've been trying. Oh, go! Why do I? Why, why we, what were you saying? I'm sorry. Why do I think that he might what? I, I value your question. So go ahead. Why do you think that there is such a difference between Dickerson and Wayne County Jail? I don't think I know, ma'am. I, I can tell you in Wayne, in, in, in Dickerson, everyone that you go there with, not a single, I, I don't remember a single person in there with a felony. And when they're in there, they're waiting to get out. They're, ne- they're just trying to play spades, which by the way, I'm really good at spades. I'm better at spades than I am at Uber. Um, that's where I, I mean, I connected with a lot of individuals in there and actually in Dickerson, good people. Um, and I connected with bad people at 17 years old. I wasn't even scared to be in Dickerson. It was totally fine. We watched movies. We got commissary. We got, um, I got released early by a couple of days. Like it was totally fine. It was like being grounded a little bit worse than being grounded. I can do that. It gave me time to sit alone with my Bible in Wayne County. I'm telling you, you are alongside criminal criminals that are telling you how to uh, that that will tell you how you can get away with murder. Literally, it's horrible. Not only that, there's black mold all over the place, cockroaches. It smells disgusting, and you're scared for your life. You have a sign right there that says, "If you rape someone, these will be the charges." If? Are you kidding me? I crawled on the ground to get under a couple of individuals. There's this old black guy that was heavy set and he was sitting there sleeping on the bench. I said, I'm going to crawl under him because I don't think he's going to get up for a long time. And I sat under him in the fetal position and I heard people talking about me the whole time behind me saying things like, I'm about to grab him and snatch him out from under there and just yank him out here and start beating. I'm telling you, this is the truth. Because I got drunk one night and missed a couple drug tests that I'm clean for anyway. I'm probably clean for marijuana today. Well, that would be good. It'd be good if it was out of my hair. I wish I was over seven years. It is not. Well, after seven years, it's no longer in your hair. Oh. I wish I never touched it again. Every time that I touched marijuana, bad things happened. And nothing to do specifically with marijuana, but that's what I was telling you about when a man does, a a wise man truly believes that what he does and what happens to him are connected, even if it doesn't, even if it's not, it's not necessarily like hitting a domino when it hits the next one. It is, but it's, it's spiritual. Bad things happen to me when I do something wrong. What, like what kind of bad things? Well, 
No way. Really? Oh my God. What's that? I knew this was going to happen, man. You guys are really locking me up. What? What are you guys doing? I think you're okay. I'm fine. You said some questionable stuff. I was coming recently. Guys, please. No, I'm good. Nothing's going to happen. I'm still on the things to judge. Yeah, we know that. What's going on with you and... I'm just scared to go to jail. No, no, no. No, not to any degree. What's your thought? Okay. You're not... Judge DeSantos, they're on... The the cops are here. No. 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 Absolutely not. Okay. No, 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 no. Well, so then at least, so we know that you're safe right now, then. I don't want anyone in here. I'm scared to go to jail. I don't want anyone to come here. We can't even take you to jail for what happens on there. Okay. We can't. We no, can't. I'm fine. I'm fine. We're fine. I promise. I promise. I'm going through a divorce. My wife is okay. I just said I'm depressed. Beyond belief. So even if you were sentenced to jail, we're not going to go against the No, absolutely not. No way. That's no, 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 no. I promise. I promise that will not happen. I promise. I promise. Can't get so you don't want to ruin it, right? Correct. They're taking a report, Miss Mr. Santos. I'm not. I just want her to know that I'm not ignoring her. Yes. She knows what I think she knows what's going on. What's your name? Uh, Carmela. Uh, Joseph. Come on, man. Why? Why are you guys? Come on, man. Where are you guys going? Please don't. You're good, man. If we were to take you, you're already taking you, right? Yeah. Hey, we're not taking you. You're scaring me, man. You're I good. can't do anything else. Please. Please. It's my name is Anthony. C A R M O N A? Yes, and I'm fine. Okay? I'm just going to close the door now. Okay? No. Okay, okay, okay. You guys are taking me, aren't you? Come on, man. All right, all right. Good right. luck. It's empty. There's a gun. No shelves. All right, so Mr. Shunky, I think at this point, um, uh, Deputy, uh, Deputy, yes, ma'am. Uh, okay, so we weren't really sure where Mr. Carmona was located, and so um, <clears throat> he had indicated that he was going to harm himself and that he had a shotgun in the room. Yeah, well, he. We're looking for weapons right now. About that 20 gauge and stuff. Can you be honest? Are you guys locking me up? Yeah. 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 Do you still need us on here, ma'am? I'm sorry? Do you still need uh, him to be on live still? Would you like me to keep this on? No, that, no that's okay. Are you taking him into custody? We don't know yet. He hasn't really told us anything. We have, we're we still talking to him. Okay, he's, as of now, he's ordered to um, <clears throat> report for a tether, I mean, to jail in Wayne County, but um, you can um, stay in communication with Sergeant Cons if you'd like, and we can update, and if you can keep us updated, we can update you as well. Okay, I have uh, the Sergeant's number, so I'm gonna give him a call here in about two minutes. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. All right, we're going off the record. Okay, thank you. Judge. I know, and that's why.